you are free. That your decisions are your own. Tell me honestly, did you really choose this path? Or was it chosen for you? Your father, with every triumph, every failure, was it not his decisions that brought you here? Has his path not sealed your own? Marked out in golden bricks below your very feet. The path is set. Keep your head up. Keep your weapon loaded. Follow the battle brick road. Хочу покажу, як кожен спортсмен піднімає вигляд. Покажи. Можемо почати з Тірексу. Ну давай, бачиш стіну, давай. А, блядь, що речай, що йде? Hello, welcome to everybody who's here. And I see, I see someone laughing here in the background. Hey, Justin. Oh my gosh, that oh broken. Oh, mm. I, I had to cut. There's an elk edit, what they call an L edit, where the the video and the audio don't edit at the same time. Um, uh, I put an L edit in there so you don't hear the injury itself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do well with broken, broken limbs. It's like ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really need to spend some time on my channel. Hey, Edwin, how you doing? We've got people here, so I have to do the routine. There's Edwin. Wait a minute, remove, remove. Yeah, remove that. There we go. Uh, Edwin, <laughs> hey, how you doing? Movix is here. Thanks for being here. That's me. Ian, you're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jessica? Anyway, there's Frost. Frost, I don't know you, but you're welcome. And this is our guest today, Justin. Uh, anyone else? I think, no, nope, that's it. That's us so far. So, Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, no. this, is, this is quite the treat. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. Um, I have a diminishing audience because every time I skip a week, my audience cuts in half the next week. So, um, let's see. Hello, all. She's making dinner. Oh. All right, cool. That's a buddy of mine. I asked you on the show because I just like interviewing people, and I got a package quite some time ago, about 20 packages ago, uh, and obviously it's something you're promoting, so start the camera. Thank you, Thank you very much, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Let's, there we go. Yep. I got a light. I, I, I lovingly pack that box just like I do all the others that I ship out. <laughs> I, I could tell the lovingly on the box when I received it. I, I, I said, this thing looks like it's covered with love. So, <laughs> yeah, this my distance between camera and desk is not large. Just a moment. <laughs> ah, so you're a writer, correct? Yes, at least I pretend to be. Um, <laughs> No, I um, so yeah, I've I've been writing um, short stories kind of uh, in my own little corner of imagination for for a number of years. Uh, when I was in college, it's kind of I, I went to 
when I started college, I was going to try to get, uh, try to go out for a uh, physics degree. And then I realized how much math was going to be involved with that. And as much as I can do math, I don't really enjoy it. So um, it was in my English comp uh, one class that, um, that I, uh, they, the professor gave us an assignment and, uh, and it was supposed to be kind of a routine expository essay and you know about a, an important event that happened in one of our lives right that was kind of the assignment and so i chose to write about um an incident that involved my mother um driving with me drunk in her car when i was a, just a kid and Jeez. the way i wrote it i didn't you know i didn't say i did this or i did that you know it wasn't first person i didn't think anything of it right i wrote it in third person and told it as a story and so after class i remember when i turned it in and uh and you know the, the professor gave us our our um our papers back he pulled me to the side and said hey you know I, you know i want to talk to you about this and i'm like oh boy what i do right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and yeah. he says he says let me let me ask you a question he says um are you are you this child in this story and i said yeah and he says he says man i gotta tell you um these other, you know, these other students, they'll, they'll sit there, you know, and they'll write, they'll, they'll say that, you know, like he says, I've got this one, this one student wrote a, a story about them having their wisdom teeth removed or whatever. And it was, you know, they described the doctor's office and this and that from a first port first person point of view. And he says, but you told this as a story, like a short story instead, and you were distanced and you you know, told it through the eyes of this kid in a third person, you know, view. And he says, you may actually have something here. Like you're, you know, you may have a knack for this. And so that little bit of encouragement kind of nudged me into um, changing my major and I wound up majoring in English. So that was oh. kind of the, the, I mean, I wrote, you know, I did write in high school. I was in the, you know, on the high school uh, newspaper staff and did some other publication, you know, in, in high school, but, you know life happened the army happened you know you go off you you know i joined the army um you know went joined the army to see the world and i haven't left the south yet so you know once i go to college i um i kind of pick pick the writing back up at least a little bit here and there um mm -hmm. and uh and so it's just i've always had a you know an imagination of want to tell stories i've always been a storyteller and so for a number of years i i was a you know the forever GM or DM for, you know, D and D or pick your role playing game. I've, I've played so many and have run so many because out of necessity, because usually if I don't run the game, it doesn't get played. So, right. <laughs> so, but and yeah. some, somebody has to keep everybody else organized, like herding cats. Pretty much. Did, um, you, did your professor, what, how long ago was that? Just, you know, I mean, I know you're gray, but yeah. 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 How long, how long ago were you in college? So, so I was a non-traditional student. Um, so I was in college and uh, started in 2005. Um, but so when I joined the army, it was in 1999. I graduated in 99. Okay. So yeah, that was, you know, <laughs> a lot. It feels like two or three lifetimes ago. I've lived, I've, my life has changed so many different ways since back then. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. All right, so they didn't call Esmo Biggs puts it, uh, collegiate protective services on you, but you didn't get one of those professors who's like, "Hey, was this kid you? Do you need therapy now?" Like, you know, no, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything like that. I mean, again, it <laughs> with it being college, you know, you, you professors don't really, you know, they don't treat you like a teacher, and you know, in school or anything. You know, it's like they don't pull out a doll and say, "Okay, where did he touch you?" You know, it wasn't anything <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> so. Um, no, it, it's just this particular, I, I was very fortunate that first semester to have these really cool adjunct um, professors for these, you know, low, low level core classes, because this guy was a journalist who, um, who had just gotten off of a, a, a tour of his own, basically, um, mm -hmm. in, you know, covering uh, Chinese politics. So like, that's like, he lived in China forever and whatever. And so he's back in the States, something, he said something was going on with his wife, you know, as far as like health and this and that. So he picked up this little job at the college, you know, just to do, you know, um, you know, ad, adjunct, um, you know, professor work. And, uh, and then I had a history professor that, 
these two, these two, they little did they know they actually were massive inspirations for me, you know, to go through and, you know, carry me through the college experience and being a non-traditional student and having a family already, right. Or building a family, I should say, right. um, I didn't have that college, uh, that standard college experience of, you know, getting drunk and, you know, being late to class and all that stuff. Like I, I had my head on my shoulders, you know, and I was actually, I showed up to learn and mm -hmm. I wasn't just there to learn from textbooks. I was there to learn something about like, it's almost like a meta way that you're supposed to use college for. You're supposed to pay attention um, to more than just what they're teaching you. And so I, fortunately I had professors that, that said, you know, screw the textbook. We're going to, you know, you're going to read, you know, primary sources. Like I had a, you know, history professor that was like that. Yeah. Know, I had, I had that. an English teacher like that. I had it for 102 and then, and then they changed the system to where it was all one semester for 101, 102. But then, cause mm -hmm. I'm about, it sounds like I'm about uh, 12, 15 years older than you, maybe. So anyway, um, but then had her again for the history of English, which was I mean, history of English was, was just the beginning course in, in, in language history. Two thirds of it had to be linguistics just to get us mm. to understand, you know, to yeah. comprehend. Um, and she, she also like, like, I'm not going to try and retell the whole, the whole thing. In fact, I don't correctly remember how to say her name, but uh, <laughs> it, it was a little bit complicated, but again, she was also one of those throw the textbook out. Um, it, this was when mm. political correctness was, was becoming a big thing and problem where, mm. Uh, she was trying to to inoculate us against the thought control of political correctness and all and all that goes with it. And mm. people, the, the students mistook her for being very politically correct. <laughs> it, was, it, it was so tough for her. And then I forget which class it was in, but uh, she started making puns and I got the puns. And that's what caught her attention. And so mm. then we, we started talking more about about, you know, what I was doing in school and, and where things went. Uh, but I don't want to diverge too, too far into that. And also I can't clear, c clearly remember all of it. Cause you just reminded me of it, you know, give me an hour and I'll be like, Oh yeah, it was this, but anyway, <laughs> no, she was, she was wonderful. Having those off textbook professors can either be a mm -hmm. curse or a blessing. And more often they're a blessing. So, yeah, anyway. for sure. Cause I mean, you know, when, when, they, when they have that freedom to be able to teach um, and, and to be able to inspire um, their students, it's definitely uh, a m much more worthwhile experience all around. Yeah. And so, I mean, that I have to say, you know, I have to kind of bring that up as a like a origin story for where I am now, because um, had I not had, uh, you know, at least some of that um, foundation, I wouldn't, uh, you know, be thinking outside of the box so much as I do now, I guess. So. Uh -huh. And, and how did getting into the military, You it sounds like you went in at about age 18. Yeah. Yeah. I was 18. I turned 19 that fall. So yeah, I think, I think you're two years younger than my smallest sister. So. Nice. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. All right. I'm talking, I'm talking to her. Got it. <laughs> um, but so you, you graduated high school, went straight in the army and yep. what did, what did they beat out of you? Um, what, what did they beat? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, so, so, okay. So when I joined, it was, um, it was still, it was kind of funny. It was, a, it was a joke. Um, cause they, they were kind of in, in transition. Um, and they were, the drill sergeants were joking about it still being the, uh, Clinton's kinder, gentler army. Right. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, and they were saying that they weren't allowed to cuss us or, you know, or whatever, um, this or that. So it was already starting to kind of shift a little bit. And plus I went to Fort Jackson where it was both males and females, uh, training together. So that was an experience in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, the thing about, um, you know, the, the basic training experience in the army is, um, the whole, like not only are they teaching you skills that you're going to need as a soldier, but they're also uh -huh. going to, um, you know, they're also teaching you to basically be disciplined and take orders, right. To, to remove yourself and say, okay, you know, it, I don't have to think in this situation. I just need to do, you know? Right. And so, um, but as far as like my identity or my individuality, I didn't really, I don't really feel like I lost any of that. But, okay. You know, 
<laughs> and bad habits that they beat out of you, like I don't know, not going to bed on time or anything. <laughs> like, right. Um, so I mean, you know, maybe maybe uh, early, <laughs> maybe early rising, it became a habit for me. Uh, of course, I never really was a late sleeper. I remember yeah. growing up even, but uh, but yeah, I've gotten so used to it now. I just I remember when um, when when my daughter was born, I just because I was so used to losing sleep and having to wake up um, at odd hours of the night due to, um, you know, sometimes my, my duty just required it at, you know, at, at work. Um, well, in, in the army um, that I would just, you know, take feeding duty all throughout the night because she would not sleep, but like maybe two hours at a time. Wow. So, yeah. Man. <laughs> I've been an I've been an OP before by accident. I lived with some friends and then they had a baby, so uh, I ended nice. up doing a lot of because oh. I I was renting the spare room ne- what became next to the baby's room and I ended up <laughs> I got woken up once by the mom telling me you know and I'm, and I'm in a bathroom going how the hell did I end up in here with the, the mom telling <laughs> me that's a hungry cry I'll take her you know because <laughs> like, I go in and like quiet the baby back down and I didn't yeah, know yeah. it but they, they were they would listen through the monitor. To, to you know to be like is is, is blue gonna get her blue's got her okay we're good you know <laughs> so, <laughs> just like put her down oh, pat her a couple times she quiets down i go back to bed <laughs> but yeah kids oh it's tough so we got ian is asking uh did being in the army seem to help you focus for college um definitely um i mean of course you know i by the time i got out of the out of the military you know and part of the reason i went in was to get money for college and, uh, and so by the time I got out, I, I, you know, I'd served three and a half years. Uh, I served during nine 11, of course, that was an experience, but, mm-hmm. um, I was definitely way, was way more mature than, than my classmates. Like there, there were so many of the classmates that were always, you know, uh, chasing each other, you know, or, you know, always, you know, uh, gunning for the next party or the next social function and this and that. And I just wasn't really about it. I was all about, you know, studying. Um, my favorite place um, on the, the university campus was hanging out in the library. So huh. I did that um, a lot. <laughs> I just I always loved being around books and and studying. That was always kind of my favorite thing to do is just, uh, you know, that. <laughs> you know, being around books. Okay, so you're around books. You've been in the military. I've known a former Marine who... Um, <laughs> I'm going to make a side note because Ian Ian knows me really well. A former Marine who turned out to be a narcissist, learning experience, real learning experience. But anyway, a former Marine where he came he came back and this this was after the 20 this was about 2010, I think 2009. He came mm-hmm. back and he was just saying, "Holy cow, like college is a joke." I mean, just okay, here's do do your task. Sure. Task done. What's the big deal? You know, um, but this is also after a lot of dumbing down at the university. So yeah. that's true. And 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 to that end, so when I started my school journey, it was in a it was down in Augusta State. Um, and uh, what does he say, Mo Biggs? He says, "I appreciate the improv on both your parts to make us feel like it's nice." <laughs> <laughs> I I need to I need to like you know squint a little bit more and like oh man oh you know a lot, a lot more yawning i'll try, um, I'll try to lean back and talk more more mellow <laughs> yeah, yeah there it is yeah do some asmr and stuff um but no i so i started at augusta state university down in down in georgia and there at the time you know like i said this was around 2005 2006 um and um i while i was there um, I, I found out that that school, the entire, uh, state of Georgia has a, like one university system. So all of the schools that are there, they're all under the same university system. So you could essentially, and, and a lot of students did this, they would take their core classes at Augusta state, and then they would transfer to say UGA over in Athens and, you know, pursue their, like their like if they want to you know want to go to be a you know for med school or they want you know pre-law and that kind of stuff they would do that and it was mm-hmm. a direct transfer and um uh, i guess the state had become the so here here i am there i decide i'm gonna you know switch over to english degree well it's actually the hardest english department in the entire state 
right? <laughs> so very strict. Okay. I got my first D on a paper there in, in comp two. And, um, this professor, like she was, she was very strict. And so, you know, there was no pulling punches. So there wasn't much dumbing down, like every, every grade in just about every class, but especially the English courses there. I mean, I earned those grades, um, mm -hmm. every single one. And I, you know, I had to straighten up and fly right. And about halfway through my college experience there, I wound up having to transfer up to uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, and uh, I transferred to Augusta, um, there I go, Augusta, Austin P. State University in, in, uh, in Tennessee, which mm -hmm. is different, uh, uh, miles different. Um, and I'm, you know, I wound up graduating from there. And, you know, and yes, I had good professors and I had good classes, but the expectations were much lower there, you know, where, where I would have to do multiple drafts to even, to even try to get a B at least I had to work at a paper when I was at Augusta state, you know, up here, I could just say, Oh, well, I can just, uh, you know, wait until the night before the assignment, drink a bunch of Red Bull and bang out a paper and still get a B, you know, it was not, <laughs> nothing. And so, and so unfortunately I kind of did that <laughs> for a few of them, you know, the, the classes that I didn't really enjoy, um, that much, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> How, so, okay. You, you were in the army and then you did that. How many times did you do that before you decided I can't do that anymore? Do what? Which one? Uh, drink a bunch of Red Bull and. Stay oh up and yeah. Out of yeah. I, um, Hmm. I hmm. mean, <laughs> That was <laughs> that was only like study mode. I didn't I didn't do that like out for leisure, you know. Mm -hmm. Like when I would play video games, I wouldn't get hopped up on energy drinks. It was always when I wanted to like try to focus and write a paper. That was yeah. that was what the uh, what the the energy drink usage was at the time. But yeah, I kind of got that out of my system uh, not long ago. But um, those yeah, they're they're really bad for you, kids. Don't don't do energy drinks. It's not worth yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had two, I think it was two overnight papers. I forget what class, I, I know what the paper was about, um, but I forget what class one of them was for. But it was, yeah, two overnights, and I decided I can never do this again. This is terrible. So, I mean, like, literally, the sun comes up, and I go to class the next morning, and I haven't slept at all. It's just twice. One was a chemistry paper. The other was, like, comparative rel religions or something. I'm just done. So, anyway, <laughs> well, I, I, well, I, you know, I guess, I guess, I had a, a much better, um, you know, output. You know, so when I say I pulled an all nighter, like it wasn't until daylight; it was at least till like midnight. So I was able to get, you know, a decent amount of sleep before my first class the next morning. Oh, but no. it was still, <laughs> I, I didn't have a SpongeBob moment, you know. What, what does um, he say? They don't do anything. Correct doesn't do better. Well, that's yeah, yeah, I can yeah, I can get yeah. that. Yeah, I, okay. I wouldn't yeah. know. I've never consumed any drugs. He also apparently got my transcript. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did something that is now considered cheating. I turned. I wrote one paper to fit two different requirements and turned it into two classes at the same time. Nice. Yeah. Apparently, you can't. It was on antimatter, but apparently, you can't do that anymore. So, so, so re somewhat related, my son tried to turn in to me because he's homeschooled. And so I'm kind of his, I'm his administrator mm -hmm. and he, uh, he turned a paper in to me, um, this past year and I caught him using chat GPT. <laughs> and I was like, I said, you know, there was a few things I'm like, I, I saw, I saw a word in there and I'm like, what is this? And, and I had to look it up, right? And so I yeah. knew he didn't put that in there. So I, I, I um, so when I, I was very conver you know, conversational about it and this and that, I said, I said, okay, I said, uh, answer me this. I said, what does uh, eponymous mean? And he <laughs> looks at me, and I'm like, and I said, yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't know what it was either. <laughs> it's it's more than just an album by REM, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So. <laughs> So I, um, so yeah, and it, what was funny was I went to try to look up, you know, I took certain phrases that I knew that he didn't write and I tried mm -hmm. to look them on Google, look them up on Google and I found things that were similar. And so when I confronted him, I'm like, okay, how did this paper come to be? And mm -hmm. he said, I use chat GPT. And I said, what? 
And so I made him rewrite that sucker and I, and I changed, uh, the, the, the topic and everything. Um, but I had him write something that I knew that he was more interested in. So at least, you know, it gave him something to, to want to write. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, we worked through it. I had him rewrite that one and another one that he, he kind of, uh, bollocks too. So, <laughs> yep. And I told him, I said, man, I was like, this is, you know, this is not good. I said, if you were in school, I mean, this type of thing could lead you to be, you know, up to, you can get suspended up to expulsion. I'm like, you do not do this. This is no, this is, you know, academic this, dishonesty. Besides making it. Order. Yeah. Besides make Oh, there's, there's most comment. Um, okay. Now that we've got this out of our system, uh, <laughs> Did you did you give them any other punishment that they would normally give in college? Like if you have to rewrite your paper, you get a diminished grade at maximum. No, um, no, I didn't because this was his first infraction, um, okay. and he didn't really know. You know this this okay. So there's that, and then the fact that I'm the one um, issuing the grades. Um, I also don't want to harm his chances for you know uh, pursuing. Uh, college mm -hmm. so it's kind of one of those things i had to weigh you know i kind of had to weigh it um and besides he's a good kid and it's not just because i'm his dad yeah <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of dad but there's a little bit of yes yeah. he, he was disciplined he learned a lesson i can see it so okay uh gpt is nice. ruining the college economy <laughs> nobody can write papers for money now <laughs> i never you know that's that's funny i never i never paid anyone to write a paper i never did any of that mess and i always i would always look at uh, even when i was mad job hunting right where you would hire someone to to create your resume for you i never did uh -huh. that because i'm like no i'm gonna do this myself because it, it's me you know, this, this resume is about me. So I need it to be from me. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. No, I, yeah. I haven't seen your writing yet because, because Chrome dog isn't delivered by the way, I backed it in a bundle, yeah. the, the bundle backing. And so I get, Sweet. I'm getting other comics with it, which has messed up my ability to back other comics. Cause they're already in the bundle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that's fine. I mean, everybody's happy, right? I mean, that's what we do at Arrow. That's how we get I, down. We back I, I each talk, other. <laughs> yeah, I, talk, I talked to Craig and I, and I told him, look, you know, your number one was in a bundle. Your number two is in a bundle. I think you got to go back to FM, F, or to fund my comic and make each floppy individually available because this, this thing is messing up people. And, so, and he did. Yeah. So, so I, I will tell you when it comes to... Um, a lot of those Arrow comics, I mean, they're available on Arrow, uh, arrowcomics.store, the, yeah. the website. So you can get those in individual, um, you know, for any out there, you can get those in individual uh, digitals or you can get the physical versions. Um, let me see if I can. So you haven't read the 10 page Ashcan preview of the first 10 pages of oh, Dog Number One? Yes, I did read that one. And okay. um, it struck me like a lot of, of people's first time <laughs> outs, which is I'm trying to lead to kind of the break between your college and now. Uh, but it, it usually when I see people on a first comic, sometimes they well, usually sometimes. Yeah. Nice contradiction. But, <laughs> yeah. But I also also I try not to be too harsh with my criticism, because what if I'm, I miss something and I'm wrong? I also try not to be too nice. So what if I miss something? I'm wrong. <laughs> anyway, it struck me as a bit sparse. And I, I do see that frequently with with uh people who are publishing for the first time is mm -hmm. their comic books are sparse compared to um well take a it's i've, I've been re-watching star wars and you've got to go back over those movies repeatedly and you realize wait there's a lot in here that just mm -hmm. flew by the first time but i still got the story and then i read it again and there's more in there or how old spider-man's were with the nine panel layout and all the narration on every panel and there's a little too dense sometimes so it right. struck me as sparse but i think i got it <laughs> <laughs> well i mean then then i then i feel like i'm doing my job because that that's the thing right mm -hmm. um I, to me the mark of a good comic is something that you have to go it's there's there's this balance that you have to find is you know is it just vague enough right is there enough ambiguity that makes the reader interested in trying to reread this and see if they miss something and i'll give you an example um 
have you read Waking Dream? Yeah. Uh, the Lucent? Yeah. Like that one, I had like, I probably, I need to go back through it again because I know I missed something. Like that thing is what, like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's so many things in there that hit you. And it's almost, it's almost like there's something new to see every time, you know, you go back through it. And yeah. so um, I think with what I'm trying to accomplish with, with Chrome dog specifically, is yeah i i'm i'm i really just want to just drop someone in the universe and let you be there and then pick it up as you go yeah. um I, i'm trying not to be too expository i right. feel to me i i don't like it when i open a book and i have to read like a novel of like all this backstory stuff before i get to the thing you know yeah um, as a <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a minute. I'm waiting for yeah. this. Oh, so in other words, if we had the inside cover be the opening of Star Wars as a comic, everybody here would be complaining about it. That's that's what we're... <laughs> <laughs> right? Blue okay, and Blue and Bancroft oh. had a messy breakup oh and neither gosh. one will talk about it. Oh, <laughs> okay, look. Huh. I can be pretty abrupt and I did have a misunderstanding with the creator behind the scenes, which I'll talk about a little bit. And Bancroft said, you know, hey, that's really not what I want my show to be about. And Bancroft's my friend. I'd rather not ruin his reputation with other creators. You know, guilt by association happens whether we like it or not. And yeah. um, and it was like, you know what? I'm not good for you. I'm not good for your channel. And part of the misunderstanding was that I didn't know the other guy was autistic. <laughs> so <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I was asking some pretty basic questions and getting a little like, well, no, just, just answer what well, you can't do that with autists. Sometimes you have to go their route. And I did not know that I didn't pick up on it. So, um, you know, th that's, that's basically it is, um, you know, I, I can be too direct, too abrupt at times and, and not diplomatic enough. And it's like, you know what, that's not Bancroft at all. He is the diplomat. So yeah, it, it's like, diplomat. Yeah, and and I I really respect his style and approach at at times when I notice it. I'm like, I gotta learn, I gotta learn from it, from him, and and so it's best that I get out of his way, and that's how I can be a friend to him. All right, <laughs> there I talked about it. Anyway, <laughs> no, hey, I would, the I would rather. <laughs> yeah, well, I would. I, I tell you what, okay, and I'm you know I, I would rather hear that kind of a story than um what kind of dress you may have may or may not have worn at a certain time in your life and then center everything around that story <laughs> so <laughs> the the dress i had to wear when i was doing improv as a, when I was a freshman and no sophomore in college <laughs> no no i'm well I'm, I'm referring to another person in our in our circles <laughs> oh sugar chris <laughs> yeah exactly it's like i'm on that show and 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 um and the the way they got a backer was uh for me which uh, hey thanks for that uh folks but yeah they um they 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 said hey you know because i asked him the question and uh sim was like uh well he asked the question so now we got to get a backer so we can get the you know we can have sugar chris tell the story so, so somebody backed it and so then he had to tell the story oh um, man yeah i missed it, there's so much i missed from the the tangential cg people so i'm sorry that i i wasn't there for this one yeah oh. well yeah sugar chris i mean you know the whole red dress press thing that's and and they always give him guff about it so mm -hmm. I, i'm not the one to tell the story but i just know that you know we all have our own um our own little um lore i guess <laughs> yeah for what we do uh, so. i did know i did see bits of, of the stream where sugar chris was in the red dress at the con at the con <laughs> <laughs> and his uh the sign was he carrying a sign on on his in front of him that said i lost a bet or something? <laughs> probably <laughs> probably uh, chris oh. Evan, evans is going to be devastated when he sees this <laughs> okay yeah. all right so, by the way before we get to um i've had the, yeah. the camera on my hands the whole time you can tell people yeah blue had me on his channel made me talk to the hands but uh uh, I, I unboxed the thing real quick. That was that was not mm -hmm. well placed in terms of camera. Um, <laughs> did you get a new like USB or HDMI cable? Uh, why? Because 
you sent me the little dust protector that goes on the end of what looks like. Oh a USB yeah. Stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably so. That's from our um, that, <laughs> my day job. I sell consumer electronics, so that that was probably one of our <laughs> from one of our USB cables. <laughs> Yeah, because the box says it's from Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we we've started carrying those too, so like we're we're branching out there at work. So okay, yeah. Well, I I needed one of these. I feel special. You... Um, <laughs> well, there you go. You're welcome. But so, so you you got through your English degree by transferring schools to somewhere easier, and as you can, I guess, it, yeah. It, um, it made me less proud. I'll tell you that, man. Um, if I had if I had to do it over again, I would have stayed in, at Augusta State and would have finished there. And then, you know, then I actually would feel like, you know, this degree means something. Yeah. So, but, you know. <laughs> and that makes sense. I understand. Uh, what do we got? Catch these hands only on Midnight Mail. Mm -hmm. And it said he was wearing the dress for charity. Okay. So after you got out of school, uh, mm -hmm. how did you, where did you take your, your, attempts at, at a writing career from there i you know that's the thing um that's pretty much where i i let I, to just so while i was in college i um i wound up publishing that um that short story that wound up being a short story i did some revision to it rewriting and this and that i also published a, another short story or two uh for some student publications um but uh, i do remember that that short story the, you know, of my mother's um, ordeal with, you know, with me in the car while she's, you know, drunk driving. Um, um, I did want to kind of make that part of a, um, the newspaper, the student publication, because a, a lot of times, you know, drunk driving is a serious thing. And most people just think of, you know, the ramif ramifications of it, like damaging someone's life because it takes someone's life. They don't really think about what other, consequences other people in their life and so the long story short is um i wanted to you know go ahead and get it in there for i want to say it was before memorial day weekend or it was some party weekend uh spring yeah. break that's what it was i was trying to make it in there before spring break so that these college kids could have you know it, it was just basically a column or you know an article in the in the newspaper so that they would have something to kind of get them to you know think twice before they did something stupid right. but um that's the, the long and short um, is I did all the, you know, student publication stuff. I wound up going to some, you know, writing conferences during that time while I was in school. And then I just had to shelve it because, you know, once I graduated um, and once few changes in my life, I mean, I had to, you know, I had to work for a living. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got out there and did something besides writing. Um, and that's, um, I've only, you know, uh, recently kind of picked it back up um, wow. <clears throat> over the past couple of years. So yeah, we, yeah. Used, we, we used to ask, what can you do with an English major? And um, yeah, it, it's kind of, you can raise your kids. Well, I know that much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I hated in English being, well, this was later in English once the university softened on a lot of stuff and I had floundered for a couple of years in terms of life direction, but they started teaching, um, there is no standard. All dialects are valid and dial, even if they come about through error. And I started, it, that got me thinking about a lot of postmodernism going on around me. Um, mm. but again, through English classes, that, that, that's what they came about. Like I understand dialects exist, but the, but each one is its own standard then, you know, and blah, blah, blah. It goes that, that way. Um, when you, uh, so, so my LC, I remember what I was about to say, my LCS owner, he's, he's got a lit degree. And oh. it's strange to me because he likes all the postmodern stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mm, I mean, so yes, I, you know, it's like I, I told you before, you know, Philip K. Dick is, you know, like he's one of the greats in my, in my eyes. He's, he's definitely someone who um, I admire and, you know, some could say that he's somewhat uh, nihilistic in his approach to humanity and, and to do two to different things. I don't know if I would call him postmodern though, maybe a little bit, especially maybe some of his later stuff, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, um, that, so as far as doing something with it, um, it did 
brand me the job to you know where I'm at now. Um, I you know initially had all this customer service experience as well as having this English degree. It helped the company create a customer service uh, job that didn't exist before. And so I wrote emails all day and nothing nothing is quite like uh, understanding a customer's concern, right? So having that empathy and being able to diffuse them mm -hmm. and even in many cases, turn them around so that they may come at me uh, in, a, in an irate state, but being able to use passive voice to get them to turn turn around and still like us as a company. Right. Um, instead of using accusatory, you know, you're this, you know, your your keyboard or you're this, it's just like the keyboard, you know, like knowing the difference, right? Right. And again, and that goes back to the the use the using of what I learned in college. It wasn't the words on the page to get the A, right? It was the application and the understanding of what I was actually learning. And so that you know, understanding the difference between active and passive voice when you're writing an email to somebody, it, you know, it, it means a lot when you're trying to, uh, you know, to be a cooler and not a bouncer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you so, said customer service experience. Um, we'll get, yeah. don't, don't let me forget Philip K. Dick. I want, I want to bring him back up again, yeah. but yeah, sure. um, you said customer service experience, so that came first after or earlier after college, before the uh, the job you just described. Is that it, it was it was peppered throughout. Um, bef so when I when I got out of the army, I kind of did. I started uh, doing some electrical work. I did that for a little while, and then eventually I wound wound up in a call center for for a while, a couple of call center jobs, and so that's when when I really got my feet wet doing uh, customer service work. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, going into to college, eventually I kind of did part time working, doing uh, electrical work again. And then uh, eventually I wound up at Walmart. I mean, I'm, it's long, long time later, I wound up at Walmart. So that was a big, you know, so I had the call center experience then I got the Walmart experience. And then eventually I would I would end up at the post office. So having those three, <laughs> those three kinds of um, of customer service jobs, it it really gave me a sense of um, humanity and how to deal with people, um, both on the phone, face to face. Um, and then you know, of course, the the email correspondence, I guess. But but yeah, um, and uh, so yeah. <laughs> well, you you've already deftly cut through your interviewer accidentally insulting you and getting to the heart of the question he meant to ask. So, you know, okay. it, it, it does work. What, what was the insult? I didn't hear it. Um, <laughs> what, I think I, when I heard myself <laughs> at, say, say that we used to ask, what can you do with a, an English degree? I realized the way it sounded to me, didn't it really sound that's, good. I think, no, that's know. well, honestly. Okay. So, well, that's, but that's true, right? It's mm -hmm. there. It's not an insult because everybody who has an English degree knows exactly what that means. Anybody who who know who's cognizant of the fact that they have a liberal arts degree, they know that they can't really use it for anything that is worthwhile. At least that's always the running joke. Or, or so at least not I direct. Take, correct. Like if you yeah. Correct. I never I've, I've I've never taken it uh, take it as an insult because um, we have a lot of people who are um, overqualified and underexperienced in the in the workforce when it comes to the jobs that they do. So <laughs> Oh my gosh! Stop, is, Felix. Is, That's not is this, me. Is this the right? I was going to say that that URL looks really familiar. That is not me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Well, you well you put it you put it in the description, man. What? Oh no! <laughs> Did I leave it in there? All right. So let me let me clear the air here, folks. Okay. Oh boy. So Justin J. Sweet is this other gentleman who is a prolific artist. He does. Um, he's done some really amazing work. Uh, doing um, covers for uh, Conan, I believe. He's also probably done some other uh, sword and sandal stuff, but he's uh, most known for his cover work for uh, Song on I Ice and Fire novels, as well as concept art um, for uh, Disney and, uh, and Star Wars. And this is his work. This is not me, okay? I'm Justin K. Sweet. This is Justin <laughs> J. Sweet. And so, yes, if, you're, if you ever find yourself seeing this, Mr. Sweet, 
Um, I love your work and uh, you're, you know, you're a, a doppelganger of mine, I guess, out there. And who knows, maybe one day I'll try to hire you to do a cover for me if you're if you're up to it. <laughs> oh, I forgot that I, I put wish. that link in there before yeah. you corrected me. I'm yeah. sorry. It's okay. Uh, sorry, but Felix. no, I. But it's it's. But so here's a here's a funny story. You know, I I was um, um, I forget. So I was on Facebook and Dan Lawless, and I got in some type of a conversation about Rob Liefeld, right? Mm -hmm. Of all things, and then at some point, I'm trying to remember exactly how it happened, but I wound up getting invited to their uh, to a uh, a Conan group, right? And so I get in the Conan group. And I think at least two different times, people like approached me and said, "Oh man, I love your work." And I'm like, and 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 they or they sent me a picture of this thing, and they're like, "Oh, you know, this this cover's so great." And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's not me, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, he is. He's great. Uh, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, they, these wonderful images we're showing have nothing to do with this discussion. <laughs> so. No, no, but but I'm telling you, this. I mean, this guy is prolific. I mean, that horse, I, you know, um, horses are hard to draw and this mm -hmm. guy, um, and I'm pretty sure this is all digital. Um, and he, he, he does it in such a way that looks, yeah, that's, that, that works. Agent Zero's web store, that works. I, and it's, <laughs> it's only cause I'm affiliated with, with the Arrow Comics. <laughs> I'm gonna, I can get to away with to, that. Not to be mean to Felix, but I'm going to go on that one post <laughs> and just, not hide user. No, 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 no. Uh, channel put you put user in timeout. No, it okay. Um, it won't <laughs> let me just remove it. <laughs> so, I don't know That's why. Weird. Yeah, I guess it's I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone. Oh, retracted. He okay. He retracted it. We're good. So when this goes to to process later, it'll it'll be fine. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, regardless. Before, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's a it's a lot of fun. It's funny when I first came in to uh, you know start doing interviews or whatever, I would do this as a disclaimer, and no one knew what I was talking about. And and the, but the more I've kind of stayed in the area, and and then more and more people are, oh, you're that guy, and I'm like, no, I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, because as we see down here at the bottom bottom left, that's Drax, right? So he was doing concept art for um, you know who would later become Bautista. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean he's he's an industry guy, um, and uh, and I think I think he did uh, Thor: Love and Thunder is the latest stuff that he did. And you're fine, Felix. I appreciate you, man. Always. We I, we I really do. we really appreciate Felix, and obviously this is my fault because I'm I, <laughs> I well, fed the misinfo to Felix. Well, so so it was it was my fault because whenever I sent you that <laughs> I sent you the link to try to dispel the thing. And then you, you were like, Oh man, your art is, is wild. And I'm like, and, and I thought you were talking about, you know, Chrome dog and, and uh, thunder horse, you know, with the, the out of obscurity stuff. And I'm like, Oh yeah, well, I'm not the artist. It's, you know, Luke stone or, or Kevin, you know, McDougal. And then I realized, Oh, you were looking at the website. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, not but to be mean to Felix is not how funny. I like a sentence to begin. It makes me feel like someone is about to be mean to Felix. Yeah, I, I don't me. like uh, having to re erase people's <laughs> posts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! No, okay, this this is great. I love it. <laughs> uh, all right, so you finally you're finally getting back into creative writing. Uh, just uh, how many, do you have kids or just the one son? Or oh yeah, okay, so. <clears throat> So remember that part where I said that I feel like I've lived like two or three lifetimes since, mm -hmm. you know, I was in the army. Yeah. Um, that's an understatement. So, you know, I married my wife uh, now for, you know, we've been married for 12 years and we've got five kids between us. So, yeah, it, you know, went from me being a single dad with two children to, you know, she had three. And so we combined households. And so, boy, howdy, you know, here we are. And um, you know, her kids were already kind of like preteens and, and one was a teenager. So like it was, we were instantly almost a Brady bunch. Um, so, uh, and now we just have one left in the nest. He's a senior and he's 17. Um, so, so yeah, he's the one with the academic, um, uh, disciplinary issue. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you're the youngest between the, the, the two of you is 17. What led you to homeschooling? And, uh, and was that new or did you do it all the, all the way? 
So, uh, no, it's uh, okay. What was it new? What do you mean? Was it new? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you now homeschooling him, or did you do that with all the kids and then okay. what led you to it? Right. So, so we we started homeschooling uh, him or he he and his sister um, a number of years ago, and what led us to it was this little thing um, called Common Core. Um, it was, you know, a way in which they were starting to teach the kids uh, in these really odd uh, ways, especially when it came to math. Um, and here in Tennessee, they they have a tendency, and I, I don't know how other states do it, but I know here it happened. But they have a tendency to teach, instead of teaching kids how to learn for themselves and be critical thinkers, they mm -hmm. teach them how to uh, basically take a test at the end of the year, uh, an achievement test. And yeah. as long as as long as they do well on that test, it lets the, the school and the unions know that the teacher is doing their job and blah, 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 blah. Well, right. th that was going on. And at the same time, our our family was going through a little bit of a religious change. And so our dietary restrictions got to a point where um, it there was two camel or two two straws that were breaking the camel's back, so to speak. One was there was. Uh, we got to uh, multiple times where my son, you know, for the school lunch at his elementary school, he didn't have like he would have a day where there were no non pork choices. Okay. So it was like, OK, you know, <laughs> so that, you know, that was that was one thing. But the, the thing that really pushed us over the edge was when they were gearing up for this test. They had been teaching them in this alternate way of thinking, this common core way of thinking, especially of the math um, and spelling and things like that. And then in preparation for this test, they send home these workbooks, which were like the workbooks that I had when I was a, when I was a kid, you know, studying for this this test. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, we were still you know, being taught to be you know, critical thinkers. And so, you know, we didn't have this common core stuff. And so here they, they spent the entire year indoctrinating him in this new way of learning. They send him these old uh, education materials to help him prep for this test. And the, those education materials were like the way you're supposed to learn. And so right. there was like this weird dissonance, this weird cognitive dissonance. And I mean, I, I just looked at him and I said, son, I don't know what they're expecting out of you, but this is not it. And that was it like that at the end of that year, like we've got to do something. And so it, that's, you know, we God. took a stand. It, it's like they're tra training the kids to cram at the end before the final. Exactly. Yeah. Along exactly. with all the other weird indoctrination. Um, you know, when, uh, when I was floundering in college, it's really floundering in life, life direction, not really my grades, although the grades did suffer it, uh, I did try it, look into education for a bit and I, you know, I found out that I had the credentials to really teach K through 12 already. And if I wanted to, it, it turns out double dipping for your major and your minor doesn't work the same as getting, as being signed off for certification. So I asked, well, these classes are in my major, but how does that work? Can I be signed off to teach chemistry? And the, 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 I remember the doc, the, the guy's name too. He also taught me biochem lot of hiv examples in that biochem but anyway he said nobody's ever asked before so yeah i'll sign it and it's like i could have been a chemistry teacher but i what kept me out was looking at how the admin it, it looked like a war between the the uh, superintendent administration and the parents and the teachers were kind of caught in the middle at the time the teachers weren't the activists and then mm -hmm. on top of that um, another guy from my church, it turned out his wife was, was my instructor in a math class where they're trying to teach it, trying to teach future teachers that not everyone learns math the same. And they were, and they were using arithmetic as the example. And the idea is you picture your numbers one way, other people picture them a different way in their heads. Here are the ones we know about. And <laughs> it wasn't that that was difficult to, um, Okay, I got to star this comment for later. It wasn't that it was difficult for people to switch and think in a, in a way that's different from how they normally think, which was the point of the class. It's that most of my classmates could not do arithmetic in the first place. And mm. we're talking one and two digit, digit arithmetic. They struggled right. with two digit addition. And then you're trying to get them to think differently on top of that. 
And right. then they're arguing to get their grades so they can actually pass college. And right. I just said, I, I can't handle this noise. I'm out of here. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's what, so let's see. Omarosa is here. I got a comment here. Um, I got to find a comment now. Okay. Schools schools have changed a lot within the past few years. There was an anti-Common Core protest movement where they're protesting anti-Common Core or their Common Core protest. Anyway, uh, demanding that they remove the tests. One small typo and the schools are removing the tests. Okay. Uh, support for Felix Haas, which is appropriate. Thank you, Felix. <laughs> With Blue suppressing my facts. <laughs> I hope to suppress your feelings, really. I'm sorry, I, I, my aim is off and I hit the facts. Uh, let's see, that's how we learned too, and we turned out fine. I'm a procrastinator and cramming worked. That the, good for you. Okay. So, uh, well, let me, uh, well, and let me, let me say that. Like, that's, that is a, um, that's an individual choice, right? Um, you, you know, that's like, thank you, because that is when you have everybody when you have um, the teacher teaching everybody at the, at the same you know level, right? We'll say, I'm going to, you know, talk about how I, I learned and they taught us how to learn for ourselves. Um, it, it leaves room for people to, you know, make choices in their own education. And if cramming is the, is your style, then go for it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'll tell that, you though, don't that try works, that. In, do don't try that in an astronomy class. It doesn't work as oh, well. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. no, definitely not. I was very much like that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Now, by the way, the reason I say "oh, good for you" to Omarosa is I know her. Um, that's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're well acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> nice, love it. And Mo is having a moment. Um, <laughs> sorry. Is the, read yeah. it again, but pretend you understand English. Wow. Okay, which one do I have to Classic read again? Mo. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, thank you, Felix. I appreciate your support, especially with blue suppressing my facts. And I joke jokingly say I meant to suppress your feelings. Um, <laughs> let's see. I uh, demand the, justice. Yeah. <laughs> you massacred my. <laughs> yeah, I hate testes. It. He says testes. Are removing the testes. Removing the wait? No, I see. Demand they remove the tests. No, he's saying testes. He says one small typo and the schools are they're, removing. Oh, the at the end, they remove the testes. Of tests. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> thank you, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I am on the edge of timing someone out. It's probably me. <laughs> Is that uh, even a thing? Yeah, he can time me out, I think. All right. I, I, anyway, well, that and it goes back to him. Um, timing someone out as a joke and then uh and then it not being received well because it was, <laughs> he was he was going too far with the ban hammer okay we've got i massacred his joke yes i did that's my job um one of my classes in college has a 10 plus page syllabus and I'll, uh, I'll, obviously not that one okay <laughs> um, where was i and a lot of people dropped the class right away it turned out to be easy it was international fi finance Mo is now offended at you. He says, don't rim shot my joke with the delivery of even the rankest amateurs that joke would have killed. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no edging. All right. So what made you turn to comics? Okay. Now this one's, this one has a little bit of a long explanation too. <laughs> um, a, another dissertation. Um, so uh, I was... Uh, thanks to the to the um, well, I, I guess the first thing to say is that in 2018 we were coming upon um, Captain Marvel uh -huh. and uh, the movie, and I remember I was I was uh, kind of getting into people's takes on on that, and I was noticing, you know, I kind of started noticing people complaining about comics here, or there, and you know, whatever. And somehow I ended up watching uh, Eric D. July's, you know, YouTube channel. And I, I'm like, mm -hmm. who's this guy? And he's he's doing a, a you know, a commentary about the upcoming Captain Marvel movie. And back then he also did these different comic book um, commentaries or whatnot and uh, reviews of different comics. And so I, I started watching him um, then. And uh, I remember after that video finished, it it went into another video about Malcolm X and 
uh, like I was completely interested because I've always been uh, very keen and, and interested in uh, racial dynamics. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a quirk about me. Um, and uh, and so like he had me at that point. And so it wasn't long after that that I I wound up joining the Libertarian Party. Like I renounced like being a Republican. Like I just was like, oh yeah, you know, we need you know all that stuff. <laughs> And um, and so in in that process, um, you know, I was also listening to to how he was talking about how modern comics were, you know, not as entertaining as they used to be. They started bringing in these these weird things, right? And um, and so I, I I was just entertained just by listening to you know the commentary about that. And in in the course of time, we you know had this pandemic that came along and I found myself um, finding uh, the need to start running um, role-playing game you know sessions on discord with um, some people that I'd, I'd been become acquainted with and I started you know we we would meet every <clears throat> every week and I ran a, a campaign for the better part of a year actually a little longer than a year um, and uh, and when I was done, all the, the campaign prep that I had, um, I realized that, you know, I built this world and here we are done with the campaign and I'm not sure what else I can do with it. So I, I, I just had all this information. I was like, I could do something with this. And it was about that time that I kept hearing him talk about um, how he's got the Ripaverse coming up and this and that. And it, and it really kind of inspired me to say, well, OK, so if he can do this, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and as I started like <clears throat> getting into how to write the comic script, cause I've always been fascinated with, um, language and with, uh, sentence structure and, and editing and that kind of thing. And so, you know, I figure, okay, well, if, you know, if I'm going to write a comic, I need to know how to write the comic. And so I kind of started it in, in the base at the basics. Um, but it, in that I, I kind of, as I studied the medium, it felt the so much like, and I, I don't, I know there's a lot of you folks out there may or may not, you know, get this, but for those of us who play actively play role playing games around a table, rolling dice and, and, uh, you know, telling stories, as they say, developing emergent narrative in the moment, um, comic books are very similar to that same feeling and that same rush you get when you're, 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 you're actively, as you're reading a comic book, comic book, you're actively engaged in a way that you're not when you're reading a novel. And um, that was put very succinctly by um, Eisner in one of his textbooks that I have. Okay. Um, and once I got a hold of that, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, this is where I want to be because it's really hard for me to schedule, you know, like you said, herding cats, right? <laughs> With the, <Yeah. laughs> being a DM, being a GM, you know, you're 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 trying to get people to your table, you know, to, to play the game and do the thing and stay engaged and and pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so, with a comic book, I I have the reader, and as long as I can do the things that a you know a a, a good game master or dungeon master does, right? And that's you know bring the the compelling narrative, the emergent narrative they will bring their own self to the table and engage with the material and let's go along on this ride together. And so that's ultimately what brought me to producing, you know, and, and even, you know, having the chutzpah to, to create my own, you know, comic book and, and make a go of it. So, yeah. Got it. <laughs> long, All right. long, long story. <laughs> Well, then let's let's go back a little bit uh, before I ask a, a question about your writing. What mm -hmm. did you, uh, we, you know, we skipped a beat all over the place, but what did you do mm -hmm. in the army? Is that your MOS, is it called? Yes. So my MOS was, a, I was a 31 Lima, otherwise known as a cable dog uh, or cable, cable installer maintainer is the, you know, the official designation, but everybody called us cable dogs. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, the way we described it, we were the infantry of the signal corps. Um, we would dig ditches and run cable in the ditches. We would, uh, you know, climb poles and do aerials. Um, so we were, you know, linemen, you know, for the army. Um, mm -hmm. And 
and so yeah that's what i did um and i uh, I, I got injured on from lifting things that were way too heavy for me by myself like a dumb 19 year old and uh and so eventually i would get med boarded but not before i actually i changed jobs um structurally even though i was still uh, classified as a 31 lima i started doing uh, jobs that uh, a nut, like other MOSs would do. I, they put me in a different section because I couldn't do all of the things that were required for a uh, cable dog to do anymore and uh, due to my back injury. So, um, so yeah. And, and then I got, got med boarded three and a half years, you know, that's what I put in. So. Okay. So, sounds simple. All right, then uh, you guys both <laughs> rolled it rolled a natural twenty in your saving throws versus competently reading my jokes, and I I'm dyslexic, but that's no excuse. Uh, I before before I read that out loud, I did read it in my head as completely re reading his jokes. So thankfully, I I, I competently read this one. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, sometimes I feel bad for you because because you know you torture yourself by being here, but I but I also appreciate you at the same time. Okay, so do you draw on what experiences do you draw on that we've heard so far? Raising kids, uh, getting your degree late, being a little different and non-traditional in college, and then work in the army and hurting yourself when you're writing now. Like, what's what what are you pulling from in the book we haven't seen yet? So. Um. Huh. I mean that's 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 the that's the real question, right? Um, yeah. So pulling on experiences. No, are you saying as I formulate the narrative as it as it is now? Because I mean, it I'm bringing a lot of you know things that I've read, um, media that I've consumed, things that are definitely like in my wheelhouse to the table. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a big cyberpunk fan, so I like I like. I love the the interplay of man versus machine and like how um, like I'm fascinated with the concept of uh, a, like a human consciousness being you know somehow uploaded accidentally or or intentionally uh, mm -hmm. into uh, a machine like yeah. that idea is just uh, you know the fact that someone would even have that idea. Is fascinating to me, but uh, the ramifications of it is even more fascinating to me. The other thing that fascinates me is how people deal with each other. And maybe, maybe if you want to talk about experiential, um, without getting too personal, there's a lot of hard things that I had to go through as a child that, like I said before, children shouldn't have to go through. Right. And um, and I've seen dark, I've seen the dark side of so many people that um i guess i feel like there's a way for me to tell stories to get people to see a little bit of that darkness and maybe find some sort of hope at the end i don't mm. know like it's uh, maybe i'm maybe i'm psychoanalyzing myself on this but um but yeah experientially you know, I, I do. Um, I have a certain level of patriotism. Um, I kind of want to bring a little bit of that in the in the stories, even though it's difficult because the the uh, place that I'm writing about, there is no America. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to, you know, it's going to bring its own challenges for sure. But um, I think human experience is what I'm after. I'm, I, I want to try to convey and explore, you know, what it what it's like to be human because we live in a time where those of us who are humane are uh persecuted those of us who care and who have a certain level of kindness are the ones that are considered weak and are the first to be put on chopping blocks right. um in the public you know in in the public sphere and i, I what i want to do is i want to use my fiction to somehow make like a mirror and point it back at the people so that they'll still stop and think, Oh, maybe I shouldn't be so hard on someone else. Maybe they are going through something, you know? Yeah. Um, you mean like Mo here? Mo, Mo's kind of <laughs> yeah. being mean to you? Yeah. Whatever, whatever he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> you probably strained your back carrying around all these giant anecdotes. Okay. 
<laughs> hey, I enjoy the long story. Hey, I'll I'll own it. I mean, I'm <laughs> I am hey, I am n- nothing if not anecdotal. That yeah. is that is a that that uh, succinctly sums up just I guess who I am. <laughs> Well, I'm hearing something that, that you're saying. You saw dark things as a kid, and, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to try and delve mm-hmm. into those. But then you also talked about the, the customer service later and calming mm-hmm. people down. Um, it sounds to me like some of the dark things you saw as a kid helped you learn compassion for others now as an adult when you see them being dark now even at you. Would that, yeah. would that be the case? Yeah, I would say so. I'm definitely I'm, I'm more empathetic than I am sympathetic. Um, and I, I, it's a struggle, uh, sometimes, like I said, in this present darkness to, to be, to not be apathetic, uh, yeah. cause there's, there is a tendency in us to just say, you know what, just, I don't care or, you know, I don't want to care, but, um, but deep down, you know, I yeah. think we have a propensity that like we really should and to not is to deny the, the very thing that makes us human. You know. Well, then if you have children, especially, you you feel a different mm-hmm. stake in this world. Uh, by the way, sympathy and empathy. A, a lot of people, including me, at times, mix these up. Can you uh, redefine those for us? Okay. <laughs> I so, know, strange. Let's pull up the dictionary. As, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, and so the way I define them is empathy is as close to, I mean, really feeling what that other person's feeling. Where sympathy is, you acknowledge and you you can you can at least uh identify with how they're feeling but you're not necessarily like feeling it with them okay. so i mean at least that's ultimately um how how i view it i think you know empathy is a much more um it's almost like you know an emotional trip that you take alongside somebody where sympathy mm-hmm. is like oh i see your emotion and i understand it in my condolences but i'm not really there with you you know right that's how that's how i see it Yeah. So empathetic is like when my sister and I talk on the phone and she's having a frustrated time and I feel frustrated at the thing that's frustrating her. That's empathy, Mm -hmm. not sympathy. Okay. Um, Yeah. Cool. Thank you. (laughs) Just a little little, little point there. Um, uh, Philip, that brings us back to Philip K. Dick and Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. So years ago, long time ago, I read, I finally read do androids dream and yes, uh, yeah, that was it. I tried. I was working a desk job at the time, like a like a help desk, just sitting around waiting for hours on a Saturday. I tried to read too much of that book at once, especially in the mountain climbing sequence that's not in the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that that was hard. <laughs> I, I feel like I was too young to read it. <laughs> um, what what do you what else do you like from from Dick and maybe Gibson and who else? Um. So, so I'm, 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 I'm a bit eclectic when it comes to, to literature. And so I, not only do I like Dick and, um, and Gibson, um, uh, I, I, I also like Cormac McCarthy, who is not very cyberpunk, but is very grounded. You know, it's, it's a very, uh, his storytelling is definitely, you know, grounded William Faulkner as well. William Gay is another guy who mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate. Um, but with, with Dick, um, so the, like his, uh, minority report, the way he, he tells, um, that, that short story in the Hollywood gets it all like, they'll get it wrong all the time. Right. Uh-huh. Um, but, um, I, I definitely like, um, the, the way in which, <clears throat> the possibility of a, of a, a machine potentially um, wanting so badly to be a human or be hu- humanoid and yet not really like knowing what it is to be human. And, mm-hmm. and he's really good at doing that. And then later on, he does like some really wacky stuff um, in a scanner darkly with the drugs and the, um, all of that interplay in there. Um, but I, yeah, I think I think the the cyber, <clears throat> the the cyberpunk elements. Um, although Gibson can get a little um, heavy-handed with with some of the imagery that he he does, yeah. um, but you know, I mean, hey, 
I think I, it's. I think. I think he designs it to be a little bit over the top. Well, my my only exposure to Gibson was in uh, was it Mirror Shades, which was edited by the other guy whose name I forget, and Burning Chrome, the, that anthology. So yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't read Philip Dick beyond uh, that one. So I probably need to pick up some of his short stories. So. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I would be remiss without bringing up Neil Stevenson? Um, oh my gosh. And you mentioned mirror shades. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> um, that, that's exactly the cover mine had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, oh man, this book is, I mean, it's, it's, it's got some crazy stuff going on there but um yeah i've got i've got the i've got a short story collection of um what philip k dick <clears throat> with um he's got a story in there uh called autofac of course a lot of his short stories are now um in this electric dreams uh tv show on amazon which um i don't know it, I, I i i watched like the first episode and didn't really like it much but um snow crash this is this is a must. I, I I need to go back through it again because I know I missed some things. But this one, it feels so much like now. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many elements of it that that it's it's almost like it feels modern, but yet futuristic, but not like it's. Um, and I would even say some Klein, uh, Ernest Klein, the guy who did Ready Player One. Um, okay. There's some there's some good elements there too. Do, do you um, find that all these I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Do you find that all these movie adaptations really miss it with these cyberpunk stories? Like like Johnny Mnemonic was a mess of a movie by the time it got to the end. <laughs> like, come but, on. I love, but I love <laughs> it. But I mean, so you know Hey, Henry Rollins is in there. <laughs> so, that well, that's true. And and yeah. Dolph Lundgren too, okay. I mean, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, uh, Ice T. I mean, it's got a it's got a really robust cast, and I love the way they tell the story, and I love um, you know Johnny's attitude about everything, you know, <laughs> like that meltdown he has um, is classic at this point about you know about his l not getting his luxury stuff, you know, uh, like he wanted. Yeah. Um, but I mean, even you know, even if we so to to answer the question, yes, I think they do miss it um, because. Uh, when you have the original creator not be a part of the the actual production of the thing and have a, a, a heavier hand in it, you're going to have whatever other creators are going to come along and say, "Oh, well, I want it to be like this." Um, and you know, we don't we need to look no further than say Batman and Robin to see that with oh, Joel yeah. Schumacher deciding, "Oh, yeah, you know, the bat suit needs nipples," you know, and whatever. Um, <laughs> um but um but yeah oh my gosh really player <laughs> one is a something yeah read the book man i mean it, it, i mean both of i like the movie hey it is what it is i like them both um well, oh, yeah for what they are all right you uh movies versus versus novels you also said earlier that uh eisner um whom i have not read has said uh, some let me get to this first before i try to spit out my own thought he should have given it a cooler tire like ever ever quest of the member berries <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um <clears throat> anyway Iser said that that there's a, a different in and uh i'm trying to paraphrase what you said earlier there's mm -hmm. a, a certain involvement you get in comics that you don't get in novels correct okay doesn't that go both ways though um, so the thing about it is when you're, when you're reading a comic book, right, I've, I've there isn't, yeah. right, <laughs> there, there's a, and it's, and it's not something that I, that you, that's, that you can really like perceive unless you really kind of, you really think about it. But as you're reading the book, uh, reading, you know, reading the comic book, you're taking in the visuals and you're completing the pictures uh, if as long as as long as the book is done right, you're able to go from panel to panel and your mind completes the pictures in between, you know, as you go along. Um, yeah. Film used to do this really well. Right. And, it, and, and I think it would keep a person engaged if they if they, you know, as they as they do it uh, more. 
Um, a great example are some of the Alfred Hitchcock movies. Um, like the off-screen stuff with like, uh, for example, Psycho, right? Yeah. Where, you know, yeah, she's getting stabbed. It's not really showing the knife go into her, but it doesn't need to, right? Your, right. your mind completes the picture. Um, another one comes to mind is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre when when he's hanging, uh, hanging them on the hooks, right? You don't need to see the hook set into the back of the person to know um to to because they're able to achieve that same like um the the thrust of the situation uh and your mind makes it you know completes the picture um there's right. something about the visual medium of a comic book that in uh where you actually you per, you as a reader are more actively engaged in what you're reading than the passive uh descriptions of a novel and it's uh, hard to really quantify and explain but it it's it's true it has to be okay and that's if the novelist doesn't allow you <clears throat> to build the picture in your head enough such as tolkien when i when i read him i'd flip over to some of those paintings by alan can't remember his last name but the paintings look nothing like what i pictured of course mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so the so what you're saying, I think, really hits when the novelist doesn't give you space. But. Generally, yes, but again, the that's and that's maybe that's the real trick when you're writing a novel. How much is too much, or how much is too little, right? right. Um, like uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, forget it. Like I, <laughs> some of his stuff is so dense with description. I'm like, get to the point, like, okay, cool. The gables, they're this size and they're this color and they do the thing. And it's like, let's move on. Right. I mean, I don't need this much description. Just hit the high notes and let's keep going. Right. Your, your, your brain does have a tendency to kind of like fill in the gaps. Um, but it's different. It's hard to like, um, and I think, but, but I hear this one's going to be a little controversial. Okay. Um, I think art when you're, because comic books are, are such a visual medium, I think art, if it's not done right, can pull you out of the, of the story. Um, if it's not done, you know, well enough, I guess mm -hmm. is the best way to say it. There's, you know, there's, there's good art or there's great art, you know, where you've got like the art is almost too, too good. It's distracting. Right. Yeah. Then there's art that's too bad. It's distracting. And there's somewhere in like in the middle, there's somewhere where the art is just right. Um, and I think at different points of like in the bronze age, especially with Marvel, I think they, at least for me, they, they wound up, you know, hitting some really good beats back then um you know in uh in in a lot of the, the different titles that i've kind of read and studied mm -hmm. so just for example um i'm trying to think i mean I, you know i would say it right now it, as far as in cg i would say that um um aaron lepresti's uh wraith of god I think he does a really good job of mm -hmm. kind of blending the two. Um, I haven't I haven't read that one yet, but I read his Garbage Man, which was originally separate chapters, and yeah, same thing. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, but. <laughs> so you can't yeah. you can't have art that distracts from the uh, from the story by being good. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in, in any case, you can't distract with the story. Uh, Dean is here to say hello to everybody. Uh, Mo agrees with your controversial opinion. Uh, we've seen this one. And what if Willy Wonka had no charisma and was into the 80s instead of chocolate? I don't want to imagine that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks. Um, I did unbox earlier. Is there any Are there any loose threads you, you thought you might want to address before we move on to uh, something else? Not Not really. Um, this is, this has been a, probably one of the best conversations I've had, uh, oh. on stream. So thanks. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> that's setting the bar really low. It makes me look down on my colleagues. <laughs> I, I, well, so to be honest, I think, I think, and it's a good credit to you. I mean, 
I think this is probably the most laid back in, in um, show. Like I feel like uh, the conversational um, way in which we're, um, of course, early on, my nerves were such a thing and now I'm pretty comfortable. So, yeah, um, I, I read about, um, cause I've been nervous a lot and I, and I've screwed up through getting nervous and then getting ahead of my own thoughts, uh, ADHD, um, got screwed up several of my streams, uh, this stream, uh, issue number 32, I just finally, mm -hmm. pull, I, I pulled it down because the idea I wanted to present came out so poorly. I just said, screw it. Well, that and the BBC struck me, but that's besides the point and, <laughs> sorry, beside, beside the point. Um, Anyway, this uh, BBC side of the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing I read was, you know, you, you want to put yourself in a physical posture to help yourself relax so that you're not all uptight with your voice. And I can hear my voice sometimes at the end of a solo stream being really uptight. Uh, so I tried that and talking to you now, I've been really slouched in my chair, but still able to breathe and just you know, lean back just slightly. It's yeah, it's helped. Anyway, well, there you um, go. <laughs> what, what are we looking at get, here? Get meta. Yeah. Um, do, do, do somebody, did you see the new rules on timing out? Oh, Dean came in and the chat came to life. Okay. Uh, I have not, uh, I already timed out the guest once tonight. <laughs> did we notice? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we can now time people out for anywhere from 10 seconds to 24 hours. <laughs> what? Dang. Okay. That'd be cool. If they did it in milliseconds. You have to type in this gigantic number, but, um, and just wondering how long it will be before somebody gets 24 hours and who that will be. All right. So I bought a game that you were promoting before I open mm -hmm. it. What can you tell us? If, and this isn't really shill because we're going somewhere with this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what, what can I tell you about this game or just about uh, how I came to possess it and be yeah. able to provide it to, 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 to people who, who purchase such a game? Yeah, let's go um, that route. Yeah, so uh, so a number of years ago, <clears throat> there was going to be a game called Firefly Online, and a group of us kind of rallied around the game, and we developed our own little um, fan club we call the Serenity Valley uh, Smugglers Association, or SBSA, and we're still you know we're still active on Facebook as a group. Um, and uh, we're, we're in touch with each other. And one of the lead developers of that game, um, it was um, uh, it was going to be put out by Spark Plug Games. Um, some people might recognize. I think there's a game called Mech Runner, is one of one of their other titles. Um, and finally, the um, what's that? Oh, <laughs> finally got the box open. <laughs> the um, Mech Runner. So so yeah, so Mech Runner. And so that uh, the Spark Plug Games. Uh, studio is going to put the game out and the lead, the the head guy over there his name is john o'neill um he you know he's very part of the you know we're all part of the same community uh rallying around this game and uh around uh firefly online in in time the the game itself got nuked by a fox for whatever reason um i think it had something to do with disney buying them out um, so it was during that time back, you know, so many years ago. Mm -hmm. And the long and short is he, <clears throat> he and I, we kind of stayed in touch over the years. Um, and I reached out to him, you know, about this time last year, uh, maybe a little you know, earlier. Um, and he said, Hey, he says, I've got this, you know, um, you know, we, we, we reconnected and he says, I've, you know, I've got this board game company and I've got this game, um, you know, and, and at the time I was selling a bunch of stuff on eBay and I was going to be doing comic cons and things like that. He says, Hey, how about I just send you a bunch of copies and then we'll just, you know, we'll just split the, you know, basically on consignment, that kind of thing. Right. <clears throat> so right. we just split the, split the funds. And so I was like, sure. So he sent me, you know, several copies of both, uh, the, the full, um, <clears throat> what is it? The 24, the core set, this, this one here. Yep. And then um, the one I, the one I just opened with four decks in it. Yep. And then they sent me the the new recruit set, which is the little expansion. Um, and uh, and so I've you know I, I sold a few of them at different comic cons and uh, and put them you know kind of put them up. And then when uh, and I still had inventory. And so when uh, Luke Stone was you know of course he's my artist for uh, for Chrome Dog, but he also is the one of the founders of fund my comic 
he approached me. He says, hey, you still got that game? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, you know, we've got a category for card games. We need, you know, we need some, some, you know, some uh, items in our catalog. You want to put it up there? I was like, sure. So I created a, uh, a campaign on there and turned it into a storefront. And now it's available for people to purchase <laughs> through Fund My Comic. Um, cool. And you're not just backing it. I mean, as soon as you buy it, I will um, pack it up and ship it the next day uh, or as close to the next day as possible. Cool. So, a little ASMR here. Nice. There we go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> very, too very far brief. from the camera. <clears throat> well, the microphone's up here. Or mic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get, if that didn't come through, that's disappointing. You know, whoever whoever designed these really <clears throat> tight tight specs <laughs> on the can't get airflow into the. <laughs> well, it's your first time, right? So, <laughs> I mean, it, it gets it gets it does get better over time. You know, I've I've had to open and close mine a few times, so I mean, you know, it'll loosen up. Um, I got rid of the guts in this one. Um, I've got playing cards in them or something in a drawer. Because I that I keep my my two decks in the in the smaller one. Yeah, it looks um, like uh, there's there's room for two more decks in each box. So we'll see what the future holds. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, you know, it, technically, I mean, you could um, with the with the other one. I mean, you could fit all six decks in there if you don't want to put sleeves on them. Yep. That's my thing. I use sleeves, so the sleeve you know sleeved cards aren't going to fit in. Um, oh. Most it, of these, the amount of shine I get from when I use sleeves really bugs me. But um, let's see, yeah. But I tried. I can't. Believe, upper de was it upper deck? They stopped making a certain matte finish type sleeve, but the back is all foggy, so you can't just flip it over and use that. Because yeah. Anyway, my own frustrations. Um, I will pick this one. I will look at that one. All right. So you're talking Ultra about Ultra Pro? I'm guessing. Oh, Ultra Pro. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not yeah. upper deck. Excuse me. I mean. Yeah, uh, I'm a Dragon Shield guy, so like, yep. um, and Dragon Shield, yeah, they are kind of shiny, and the ones I have here are, these actually might be the ones that you want, because they're matte. I, I when I get around. Dragon Shields, I always get the matte, but they're, man, they're expensive. Yeah, I mean, relative, I guess. I don't know what, what expensive is. They're like twelve fifty for 100 and you get a deck box. Yeah, with, which bad. fits with cards in it. I get to me expensive was at the time I was already spending money on magic cards, so it kind of hurt. Yeah. All right, so we're switching cameras. Uh oh. Uh, he's here, but I have a device not connected. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to shuffle just yet without breaking it up. And here we go. Oh, that's wrong. Whoops. <laughs> it's still not going to. Okay. How are we doing? <laughs> so that's on. Uh, we've got probably cyber stalking Angela Curry for comment for Dean. Wait a minute. All right. I would predict fix, uh, fizz. Oop, add back. So is it letting you select a different camera? Yes. So it there was what it, it was defaulting to the um, to the OBS camera, which I don't even have OBS. Oh right, right, right. It was weird. All right, let me let me do it this way. That way. I never had that problem until I installed OBS, and yeah. So yeah, these these have a nice matte. Uh, non-glossy finish, but they're they're the old Ultra Pros. I don't even, yeah, I just kind of threw these in there. I'm seeing yeah. double eight hands. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I could um I could go grab. I think I have some clear Dragon Shields where the, instead of a color on the back, they're clear. But I don't think everybody wants to just sit here while you shuffle for ten minutes and I dig them out of a box. So yeah, no, it's have, fine. Th these are my sacrificial <laughs> lambs. <laughs> Okay. Now, I'm probably gonna have to go snack some water myself right now. So, sure, go ahead. I'll narr I'll narrate. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I read the rules last night, and uh, from what I understand, there are effectively 
you have different types of heroes, A list, B list, C list, and whatnot. Every hero has on him or her down there a uh, there's a little flavor text and whatnot. This is Doctor Wizard, and she says um, her flavor text just says how does she do that? She, her special ability down here is drain a card from your. Uh, Oh, sorry. Draw a card from your... I need glasses. Draw a card from your deck when a rival plays a story card. A story is another type of card. These are just the character cards. It has two symbols on it that coach you on how the, the whole thing works. Um, one of them is it, it goes at any time and it goes in reaction to what your opponent does. That's what the two symbols in the corner there mean. One's infinity. The other is it's an arrow on top. I know it's blurry. So we all know my camera sucks. Uh, I tried to replace my camera and it got terrible. Everything got worse when I upgraded Windows 10. All right. So um, these are our characters. You play three characters at a time. You know who your characters are. You select them. And as you lay your characters out this way, and allegedly you're supposed to have these cards over here and the blue backed cards over there, or the instructions say, if you're left-handed, you switch it. And then the instructions say, if you're ambidextrous, quit showing off and just put your cards out. So, okay. So we won't, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I guess if you're left-handed because you're going to draw from here more. Card types. Uh, when you make an attack, you can use a team up to attack with two characters instead of one. I hope I'm not misunderstanding this. And your attack is to deal a card labeled smash. There we go. And I have to ask him a question about keeping the cards in order because if the rule said that when you lay them out this way, if you if you lose a character, then you can't just hop them over. You draw and put the replacement where you lost the character. I don't know why. It, it didn't say anything about why, just you're supposed to do it that way. So we have a whole bunch of smash, which is the attack. Um, if the smash is countered, or sorry, if the, if the smash is not countered by the opponent, then the opponent is knocked out. If it is countered, then you're knocked out unless you also counter back. Whoever does not counter back last gets knocked out. And then there's, um, I'll, when he gets back, we will clarify on how how a character is actually put into the discard pile, you know, basically killed. Um, I think they're decommissioned. I, for, I forget the name for it <laughs> exactly. Uh, there are other cards that, that are used to change the entire table called story cards. These say things like, uh, canceled is such a strong word. Let's just say you're you're the oh that's flavor text. Uh, let's just say you're kind of in between books right now. Oh, anyway, defeat a rival. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay. So I gave I told him a little bit about whoever's still not whoever's still awake and listening to this. I told him a little bit about <laughs> the cards, the symbols on the the side. Um, when they have a singular ability, you you turn them just like in, in magic tapping. Uh, they have flavor text and, and abilities for each character. Some are ongoing abilities, some are in reactions, some are one-time use for your turn, and it comes back. Uh, let's see what we got. Team, team ups let you use two people for an attack, and I explained smash, and then you can counter, and whoever counters last wins. So, Pretty much. Yeah. Um, not sure I know how to play. <laughs> it's Well, the, the main thing about this game... Is if it like if if it's if it's complex, you're probably doing it wrong. Because this game is is like every time um, I tried to overthink it, it wasn't right. You know, it was like you don't have to overthink it. It's it's it, it is just as simple as as you think it is. Um, and things are gonna feel bad, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> that, that's hard to be alive. <laughs> well, it, it just it, it's like okay. Well, this this kind of feels bad. It was like well, yeah, because we're you know simulating a battle between two sides, and you know there are gonna be casualties. So let's keep on rocking. You know that's how it works. By the way, did you <laughs> did you play Overpower way back long ago? Oh my gosh, yes, in the nineties. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, and I really like those cards because they had they were um, like they were air, um, what was it air shuffle? Like they actually had a texture on them, if I remember right. Um, almost like a you know linen feel. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think I've I've played a card game like that since. I really wish I still had all those cards. Oh my gosh, these are so new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> if anyone's still watching the stream, these are incredibly new. Yeah, sorry, I didn't send you any uh, <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> I didn't order any. <laughs> I should have made that. Maybe I should make that one of the the extra, like the extra add-on rewards once we actually have add-ons. Yeah. Hey, how big are these decks? How many cards is this? Um, great question. Um, all right. So you got your six heroes, right? Yep. Then you're gonna have your six. Um, man, I should know this, right? I I think I saw it on the website. What all is, um, is in a deck? Yeah, so it's you got your six heroes, you got your six supers because of them, right? Um, but like the six supers are in this deck, then you've got your um, X amount of story cards. Actually, you know what? It's probably right here. Oh, yeah, as, as they um, maybe even in the bigger one that's in the um, in the core set. Which, by the way, folks, what you can do is if you know if you don't want to go for the whole core, you can just get the expansion. It's standalone. You get you can you know play with two players with just the expansion. Nice. You don't need yeah you don't need you don't need the core set to play. So, and of course um, you you can disassemble these decks and build your own later. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And if you get you know if you get the deluxe, which is just a fancy way of me putting them both together like you purchased here they're uh -huh. blue um you get all like all the heroes that that are available and so then you can just kind of mix and match and build your own out out of all of that stuff um let's see i, I feel like i'm opening a new medicine and reading that weird little pamphlet ah, yeah. here it is a deck contains no more than 25 smash cards a deck has no more than five team up cards a deck can have two of the same super or story cards. Can't. Okay. Oh, can't. Sorry, can't have. Okay, there you go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Your deck must have 40 cards. We suggest you include 25 smash and team up cards, nine story cards, and six supers. So there you go, 40 cards. Okay. So you got 40 cards in the deck and then six in the character stack. So. All right. Oh, let's see if my if I reading before bed actually lets me remember anything like college with lots of Mountain Dew and um, <laughs> I I, I want to know what what harm I was doing to my liver back then because I I ate a lot of stupid bad stuff. Oh Mo, yeah. <laughs> Send the sleeves to Micah. He needs uh, more than. Does he there's, wear there's a, wife beaters? No, he tears the sleeves off his shirts because. He has been kind of bodybuilder-ish or powerlifter-ish, but he's also obese like mad. So on and off, oh. he's trimmed up and, and not and whatnot, or you know, up and down. So so no shirts were ever comfortable for him. So he, that's him. Well, the other thing about new, new cars is once you put a little bend in them, they actually shuffle nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm going completely random here. So completely random or, or yeah, that, I, I mean, that's just the deck, right? Yeah. You just, you, <laughs> yeah. That's fine. No, I'm sorry. I mean, my, my three characters, I didn't read them. I'm just grabbing through. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> it's part of, it's part of the fun. It's like, we, you know, the, the, um, the rules, I watched a little video to kind of get a refresher cause it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, you know, they say, yeah, pick, pick three and then put the rest down. I'm like, eh, Where's the fun in that? Yeah. Then I guess I guess we just flip them all over. All right. so I got. Oh, nice. I didn't even mean for that to happen, and I want it. And I, I like all three of those to be in play at one time. This feels like when I try to play Magic, and these guys have like kill you in three turn decks, and you're like, oh, nice. I have no idea what these cards are. <laughs> 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 all right, defeat the quitter and bring back a defeated teammate of your choice to replace him. Okay. Defeat the quitter. Oh. Yeah, he's he's the quitter. Okay, so if I if I do this, then I switch out with somebody else. Okay. Oh, that's his ability. Yeah. You just defeat him, swap him out. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I I guess so. I kill him. <laughs> I put him yeah. in the defeated pile. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, draw a card from your deck when a rival plays a story card. Okay. Um, oh, I do, do remember it's five cards for the hand. Did you mm -hmm. want to cut mine? <laughs> I mean, yeah, let me reach through the power of... <laughs> You're fine, man. All right. <laughs> I have no idea what these do. Gain a free smash. Nice. Against any stunned rival. All right. So I'll let you go first because uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. All right. Um, let's see. So. Okay. So Night Pony. Um, <clears throat> is going to smash. Um, so it says, if Dark Unicorn is on the team, Night Pony uh, gains a free smash. So um, Night Pony is going to. Who do you have out there? You got the Quitter. What's the Quitter? Cool Man and Doctor Wizard. And what is Doctor Wizard? Uh, draw a card from your deck when a rival plays a story. Okay, and then Cool Man. What's he do? Oh, geez. Does it gain a free smash against any stunned rival? Gotcha. All right. Yeah, we need to... I guess we need to get him out of there. All right, so Night Pony is going to attack... Um, free smash. That uh, Was that annoying chicken ju in his jujitsu? Oh, my gosh. It's <laughs> talking about you. There's, yeah, there's a backstory to that. <laughs> I don't, oh, my gosh. So the 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 question that I that I actually had was instead of me selecting, I I don't know, but I think they have to stay in the same lane. I was curious about that. Um, so that would mean my left, your right, if if we have to go straight across. Well, actually, okay, no, that can't be right because what I'm I'm not looking at three different lanes. It's just three of the same lane. So yeah, yeah, yeah well, I why... think. Yeah, why when like if my middle sense. guy comes out and I yeah. you know or, you know gets defeated and I bring out somebody new, right. why did the rules say I have I can't you know I can't just do that and right. bring this out like what does it matter? So right. that's that's the only reason I was curious yeah. about the lane. Thing. Yeah. So yeah. So Night Pony is going to attack um, Cool Man. Okay. So she's going to smash him. And so I counter with a smash. Um. And then, yeah, that's not going to do anything. Okay, so she gets a free smash, so I smashed again. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I have to counter twice. <laughs> okay. Right, pretty much. So, and I don't have any more, so that's, that is that. So she's stunned. So she is stunned. And that's, you get, you know, you get one action per turn. And since I used this one card, I draw another. So I, okay. I go up to five and that's my turn. It's over to you. And I think the rule said anytime you use a card, you draw and I've used two. Yep. So Correct. So drawing is really not, it's, you do it, you do it, but it's not like part of the turn. Okay. And he gets, so those are discard. He gets a free smash against any stunned rival. So there she is. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's one. <laughs> that's it. Um, and I think she's defenseless anyway. So yeah, she unless goes... you have a team team up, can you defend with a team up? Um, no. Well, she's. I think when a character's stunned, you can't. Um... Oh, thanks, Felix. I appreciate that. Way to way to totally redeem yourself. Seriously, if you guys have like. <laughs> I may not be able to to draw, but I, I'm I'm at least trying to write. So check out my Substack and please, you know, subscribe right now. It's free subscription if you want to pay. Great, I do plan on you know eventually having some some cool um, paid stuff on there. Um, I'm trying something different. You know, everybody's wanting to expand their um, their reach, and I think with Substack I might be able to produce comic books that way. So we'll see. Oh. Okay, like ebooks. No, no, more like um, more like Patreon. You know how you know how uh, EBS does you know trading cards to his patrons on uh, Subscribestar now. Okay. What yeah. I would like what I would like to do is provide comic books for people who um, who subscribe to me eventually. 
you know it's like you know monthly or oh. quarterly comics okay Some, you know physical comics something you know i'm i'm it, it's i'm working it out as i go so <laughs> but but yeah uh, so here we go. Felix Haas has noticed she gets a free smash and she's defenseless to, to prevent a free smash problematic from Frost. <laughs> all right. That was my one action, so it's your turn. Okay. The, the goal is to defeat all the other guys' heroes. Correct. In, in case people didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So... Oh, uh, right. Okay. It, also, in the in the turn, you're allowed to discard a card from your hand. Okay. Just kind of like as... Um, but the only thing is, I don't know if that's part of the part of the one action. You must perform one of the following actions during your turn. Okay. Yeah. Discarding an unwanted card. Yeah. I'm not burning my turn. Are you kidding me? I don't know. I, I think it... It, it says you must perform one. I don't think it, it means that you're limited to only one. I mean... Okay. Or wait a minute. Oh, after your turn. Okay. Maybe that's uh, why one is capitals, is to say you do only one thing. Yeah. Yeah, play... Okay. All right. Let me see All what right. story I have. I've got a story. Um... <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play uh, spies dislike us. Uh, <laughs> soup soup strikes again. S O U P strikes again. They've unveiled a new plot to take over the world. Somehow the details are vague, but they say it's gonna be amazing. All players must choose a response: A surrender, that is stun your active teammates, or B sacrifice defeat one of your teammates. And so we have a choice. You can either stun all of them or you can defeat one of them. Well, the quitter is <laughs> is, oh. is made for being defeated. <laughs> so <laughs> This affects both of us, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, either one. Like I mean, you you can you still have a choice between those. I chose this and you can choose, you know, to sacrifice one of yours if you like, but No, I'm I up by one that. hero on you. I'm I'm going to I'm going to stay that way. Um Let's see. With Chillax, she has a power. She says if stunned, Chillax can revive herself. So I don't know when I'm supposed to use her power. All right. Is this my hand is limited to five? Because I get a, a draw card anytime that you play a story. But do I have to discard? Oh, yeah. Them? No, no. You're no five is your ma is your uh, minimum. OK. Yeah. Five's your minimum hand size. Yeah. G games are boring when you're learning. I know this is probably painful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. to, to do it again sometime. So yeah, so we're both stunned, and which means, do I unstun at the beginning of my turn, like all of them? Um, I don't think I don't think stun. Yeah, it's not. We're not playing magic here. Let's see. Okay. Um, <laughs> like I said, we're we're you know overthinking it is. Uh, let's see. React to another player on their turn can only be used on your turn. Well, that doesn't. So okay, can only be used on my turn. So if I stunned and it was my turn, that's okay. All right. Um. It says if your entire team is stunned you may discard and draw up to five new cards <laughs> okay all right okay well shoot. Oh, it what? says up to up to five so i'm gonna discard those i think yeah i'll do that and then i'll draw up to five cool that works um Place one of your stunned characters on the defeated pile and summon another one from the character stack. 
Hmm. Okay, so we're playing that you have to do at least one of these actions, not only one of these actions, right? That's what it says, yeah. Perform. Okay. You must perform one of the following actions during your turn. Okay. It doesn't say only one, so we could do all six. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he, you know, putting things in capital letters is not the same as being being explicit with another word, like only. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um... I refuse to I refuse to underthink this game. <laughs> you refuse to underthink it. You yeah. must perform one of the following actions during your turn. Attack with a smash card, use an active character's power, play a story card, play a super card, discard an unwanted card, place one of your stun characters after your turn play continues to the left, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's just one per turn, and then it, we just keep going. All right, because I don't know what you're doing now. <laughs> you played a story, and then I don't know what happens next. Right, so I played the story. My turn's over, so now it's your turn. Okay, when do when do my people unstun? <laughs> That's... They well, unless they have an ability, or you have a story, or you know something from your hand that allows you to unstun them. The only thing you can do with a stunned character is move move that one stunned character into the um, the discard as your one action for your turn, and you bring another hero out that is not stunned. Oh, okay. Let's see. So I need an unstun ability somewhere, but if they're stunned, right. they can't use it, and. Which is weird. Well, I mean, not necessarily, because just because it has the symbol, that just means you can you you can only use that on your turn. Right. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, find? so a while ago it says okay, so when I stunned them. Right. Uh -huh. The Stormy Heather says, if Stormy Heather is stunned, summon one super card of your choice from the deck. So I get to look through my deck and f I'm going to find her super card because why not? Because reasons. All right. So we're still finishing your turn while well, I think. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say reshuffle, but I'm going to assume so. <laughs> Bless her heart. I do like the art on these cards. It's fun. I have this, and the this names. one. It, the Raging Dinosaur is kind of cool. Like, that's fun. I assume you don't remember what he does. <laughs> so. Raging Dinosaur? No, I don't remember what Raging or, I'm Dinosaur sorry. did. Dinosaur Rampage. No. But I bet if you read it to me, I'll know. <laughs> yeah, that might that might happen soon. <laughs> okay, when when you're done re remembering all the parts of your turn, let me know. <laughs> all right, yeah, go ahead, do your okay. thing. All right, so I'm going to sacrifice him because he quits anyway, <laughs> and bring out a new one. And so he's defeated, and that's. That's it, right? That's my one action. That is your one action. Now, here's where the game gets gets crazy, okay? Okay. So you have two stunned characters on, in play right now, right? Mm -hmm. And I have three. Um, so when my... Uh, let's see. So as I'm looking at this, play a super card if the matching character is in your team. So... On here, it doesn't say anything about using their power as being one of those actions. So I'm guessing it's an action that can be a thing as long as it's on my turn, right? Yeah. But it's not really an action action. It's just a power that I can use because it doesn't say anything about the powers here. Right. So I'm going to use Chillax. Chillax's power to unstun her. And then... <clears throat> Um, and then I'm going to play uh, Chillax's super. Chillax stuns all non-magic characters on all teams. Now, already stunned characters get defeated. 
That's these two, one of whom is magic. So correct. Well, so if the but if yours is magic, then that magic stays in play, just stunned. Oh, all non magic. Okay, that'd be this one. Correct. And yep. that's not a story, it's a power. Crimson Crustacean is safe from story cards, but not the power, and he's not magic, so he's defeated. Well, he's not defeated, he's just stunned. Oh, he's oh, that's right, he wasn't stunned before. Okay, yeah. And then so I got to bring out two stunned. Yep. And, all right. Yep. So, and that was um, playing the super card is does take a um, does take an action. So that was my turn. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't really want to play this as much as I wanted to a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, <laughs> this dinosaur. This yeah, dino shark rampage. Sorry. Uh, there's the rampage and yeah my story is uh, origin is the new smash stun a rival team oh wow <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh okay <laughs> that gum mm. fiddlesticks your turn that's no good, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. When a rival plays a story. Okay, not me. So forget that. Uh, summon a card of your choice. Oh, that's okay. That's a one time. All right. So since you stunned them all, I'm going to I'm gonna take the gamble and draw up to five. Hopefully I'll do something against you. I don't care if you draw them one at a time and think about them. So. <laughs> All right, so Chillax is going to unstun herself because she can. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Ninja Noir, uh, her power. Turn the card around while invisible. Um, she is safe from everything except story cards. She, reappear, she reappears on her next action. So for whatever that's worth. So she's okay. invisible now. Um, I'm going to use Eugene Genie's power, which I don't know if I'm like, I guess, I guess because Chillax says if stunned, Chillax can revive herself. Well, I mean, her power, she uses it, right? Right. Then Eugene Genie's power can be used. I think so. <laughs> I mean, these, I don't, if it's the one time thing where it shows the little bone falling over as the symbol. I th yeah. think they have to be alive for that, but these infinity effects, you know, I don't see why those wouldn't be all all the time. Like Crimson Crustacean is safe from story cards all the time. All right. Right. Um, and then I have a reaction here to draw a card if you do something. And it's right. like, all right, that's that's both symbols all the time. So Well, in yeah. this one, it just simply means that it has to be on my turn. So That's I'm all it means. Their, all their powers. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not part yeah. of the action, so so I drew the cards, and now I get to figure out which one do I want to do. So you've got one mutant at play. Um, so my one action for this turn. <sighs> All right. Let's 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 do some fighting, because we're playing <laughs> Superpower sma Smash Masters. Which one uh, is like magic? It's not. Playing spasm, sp spasm. <laughs> All right, so Chillax is going to um, attack uh, Fossil Fool. Uh, so she's going to smash. That's one countered. Um, and then she's going to team. Well, actually, do I have to have? I guess I'd have to have another like be unstunned right for yeah. them to team up mm -hmm. okay all right so we're gonna smash of course if somebody's attacking a stunned pl player can you team up with an awake player to defend them mm. that's interesting but uh, anyway that's not what we're doing right now <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i don't think so uh i, I know i'm gonna lose i just know <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm the one on the ropes here. Okay. Back at you. Back at you. Uh, when do I start drawing to replace cards immediately? Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Well, I think so. Or maybe after. I saw something about anytime you, you play a card, draw a card. I uh, just want to make sure before I go with it. Because you could go forever. Yeah, no. Well, you can unless until you run out of smash cards. So, right. yeah, I think if you, you know, play a card, you can draw a card if it's less than five. So, like, I had yeah. eight cards, so now I'm down to uh, four, so I would draw one now. Okay. Um, one, um, two, two, three. Okay. Back at you. All right. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> if uh... we can draw... But the thing is, it, but it says in the rules to reshuffle your your little your discard into to create a new deck when you need it. So this really could go on forever. Well, yeah, but it it could, but it won't. So you you have de defeated me, or the not four? defeated, but but you've you've um, yeah, you got me because I didn't have another smash, and we're limited to five. Okay. <sighs> How do I unstun? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm reading a, a card here called Who Spectates the Spectator? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna save that. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Oh, here's a cool story. Except that my guy isn't isn't affected by it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not playing that. All right. So one, one thing I hate about going into a game blind is I have no idea what these cards are. And all right, I'm just going to be mean and she's going to counterattack your one in the middle. Okay. So she's going to attack chillax. Yeah. That is mean. Oh, <laughs> I mean, because there's no defending a stunned creature. I mean, character. <sighs> so you done? Yep, I'm done. All right, so I'm going to play a story. It's called Decompression Ray. It says, your comic book got zapped by a random decompression ray. You know what to expect. Lots of talking this issue, but nothing actually <laughs> happens. While the others are distracted, take two more turns. <laughs> Everyone here is going to die. <laughs> Which I can't. I mean, okay. So, so, um, okay. So I'm going to draw up and then I'm going to use uh, Eugene Genie's uh, power. And then, don't you have see. to replace that one missing character? I don't have any. That's why oh. I'm saying you're you're probably going to wind up winning. Oh, okay. Um, so this here, like, I can flip her around to be this invisible character, but she's still stunned. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna play for my next turn. Um, defeat all mutant characters. So there's only one in play. So so fossil fool is defeated. She's gone. And then you, yep, you got your last one. I got two nature type characters and one magic type character. Um, you got a third turn coming. Yeah. How about that? So I'm gonna play um, Demolicious. Uh, draw three cards for whatever it's worth. I mean, it's really just a point of like, oh yeah, you're gonna kill my people, and then kill my people, and game over. It's your turn. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Draw three cards. Oh, so your your hand just got bigger. That's all it is. That's all that happened. I was hoping to get something that you know. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Uh, which card do I want to get rid of? <laughs> oh, you're going to take the turn off? Oh, wait, wait, what do you mean? 
So when you when you get rid of a card, right? When you discard, that's one of the one actions you can do during your turn. I was thinking about it, but I think I'll just use this one instead. It's year one. <laughs> and uh, oops, a rookie hero is bound to have a few setbacks. All players must choose to defeat one of their characters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're down to two on one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And then her special ability is now I have to stun her to use it, right? Um, no. Okay. Uh, her special ability is I spend a oh I don't have a smash card. Never mind. I spend a smash <laughs> card to revive a stunned teammate. <laughs> so, this this is a very weird game when all of our our players are asleep. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right, it's yours, man. We're simulating it being after midnight in game terms, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This... <laughs> um, it it oh is gosh. getting late for you, but yeah. Well, no, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it is, but that's okay. I'll hang in there for just a little while longer. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, I mean, there's no way to unstun them. So I'm going to play a story to draw three cards. It's your turn. <laughs> I've got I've got most of my deck in my hand now, and oh. nothing to do with it. Yeah, this is uh, so. I guess I could win by playing the sh the uh, the shark, Dino Shark Rampage. All right, the Dino Shark escaped from the lab again. Again. Fortunately, the scientists that created them have issued a formal apology. Oh, that that's... Yeah. <laughs> this really does make fun of me. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Anyway, all the people who died. All right. All players must choose to defeat one of their characters. Uh, well, then there you go. So, you won. <laughs> the game. That's it. That's the okay. game. And that was only a little slow and stilted because I'm not, I'm really not familiar with things. We kind of forgot a couple rules, but um, you've got most of your deck in your hand, eh? Yeah, that's, that's Jared Bricky. He's, uh, he's also um, in the Out of Obscurity anthology that we have going. He's got, a, he's, he's the one that, that's behind um, Super Guy, or as he says, Super Old Guy in the oh. anthology. So, okay. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, there are links for there. I corrected the links while we were live and got rid of that that one link to the artist. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thanks for that. Yeah, and and the out of obscurity. <laughs> it's I don't know why I'm shuffling. We, we're not going to play again. But uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, that took so long. <laughs> Unless, <laughs> I mean, I want to, but I don't want to kill my audience with you know boredom and whatnot. Yeah, that's uh, true. I really do. <laughs> I really want to play again, you know. <laughs> but, we we can we can play again on my channel at some point. Okay, because cool. that's I do that. Like in mine, I uh, we play Dice Masters, or I try to. I plan on playing Keyforge. Like I'm, I am a card player. So I I have not tried Keyforge yet. I, I need oh to read those rules gosh. as well. That I, game is awesome. I have like twenty decks. <laughs> I'm just like I need someone uh, to play with. You had twenty Keyforge decks. Yeah. Sweet. I just picked up a bunch. They were on clearance. I picked up a Dude, bunch. Dude, let me guess: were they were they worlds collide? At, and you got them at clearance at Target? No, uh, they were oh. clear. They were being sold clearance uh, on eBay by my local comic shop. Oh, and neat. I just said, "Sure, I'll buy that." That's like two thirds off. So I just got what he had left in the boxes. So I've got Dang. a whole bunch of decks. Yeah, we need to coordinate a time and uh, play because uh, that is my KeyForge is my jam. <laughs> Great. Now I got to read those rules too. Okay. So, <laughs> and I don't mean to cut you off. Like this is kind of fun. I just know that I need need like it'd be more fun if I were fluent with it, and I'm not fluent with it yet. Um, yeah. No, you're fine. Hundred percent. Did you, did you think of great. a book a book to mention that you have to just tell us about real real briefly? Um. Yes. Actually, I did. Cool. Real briefly. Oh boy. <laughs> well, real, real briefly is like you got. I put a 15 minute cap on it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. Nice. Thanks for that. Sure. Um, <laughs> all right. So here we go. So this this is um, 
a an old razor and she now did you want me to stay current or what were you wanting me to do because i, I know, don't know this, i don't know what this is where we are for. now so hey <laughs> let's roll how we it. got here this is what we're doing okay yeah. <laughs> so this this is one of the one of the early appearances of she um by uh by billy tucci um in a comic book uh called razor back in back in the day um and uh and that's actually um billy tucci signed on that right there i've got his signature in in a few different ways um mm -hmm. i met i met him at heroes con uh this summer uh when my wife and i went on vacation and yes i'm opening a comic book i don't care i'm i believe comics should be read not just like oh yeah someone signed it and then i'm just gonna lock it away forever slabs are evil this. it's not how i rolled yeah yeah, the only slab. Let me flex for a sec, because I I love to do this. The only slab that I own and probably will ever own is this one, and it's oh, because okay. it, it's the new stand edition. And I would defy oh. you to find a new stand edition of pit number one. Um, and apropos is it's nice and broken here, which is yeah. a total <laughs> pit pit thing to do. So. <laughs> And that's how that's kind of how I acquired it. I had it. I got it discounted from a buddy of mine here locally. So, and I like yeah. I like to have him on on my streams to to game sometimes too. So anyway, so yeah. Here's Razor. I don't know if any of you folks out there remember Razor, but she was this really like Ultimo badass chick. Mm -hmm. um, but this this is Billy Tucci drawing a Razor comic or the you know the first portion of it. Um, writer penciler and finishes billy tucci um the only thing is uh so as as we go along in this book like <laughs> it's it's definitely over the top 90s stuff right yeah. but i love black and white now um i've got i've grown to, to have quite an affinity for it she she gets shot right here and 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 it breaks her little <laughs> her little strap. And so the rest of the book she's she's got this strap that's just falling down, you know. And you're thinking, is it gonna fall all the way down? Where when's it gonna you know? And right here she's got a little wound, you know. <laughs> so, but um, but yeah. So I cornered I cornered Billy because um right here at the back this thing teased me because whoever edited this book. You know, whoever was over London Night Studios at the time said this. It says Razor's edged. One year ago, William Tucci came to the London Night Studios looking for work. I thought he was too good to be hanging out in a, in the small press area. Why not Malibu or Dark Horse? Poor poor bastards didn't give him a chance. Um, so I was wondering if this guy mean means business. He did. Billy begins to crank out a short story about Razor. Then he calls up and adds his character to the story. She was born that day. The rest is history. So the way he makes it sound is that this is the first appearance of she, right? Yeah, it sounds like that. Wrong. Because <laughs> it is not. Um, and what was what was what was even more funny was when I when I talked to Billy about this and asked him, I said, Was this the first appearance? And he says, No. He says, not just no, but hell no. He says, I actually, he he uh, did not even want them to go to press with this one because they didn't keep all of his um, his work in it. Oh, yeah. They cut. So they he, cut pages. He, yeah, it's weird. It's like it got to. Um, there's a a point. I'm trying to find it. Let me see here. Okay, I think. I should have marked it, but I think this is his last page. And so from here on out, the rest of the book is somebody else. Uh, drawn by or, no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. No, it's to here. So this was, this was him, I believe. Right. Uh -huh. So all the way up to here. And then I think he said this starting this page and then throughout is no longer Billy. Somebody else. Yeah. So I, see all a, this... I see a change even from here. Yeah. And, uh, and it, <laughs> uh, he, you know, he was lighthearted about it and everything, but, uh, but yeah, he said it, it kind of ticked him off at the time and they, they managed to, you know, compromise or, you know, whatever, but not without, not without so many, um, copies going to print and whatever. I, th I think they eventually worked it out somehow or whatnot, but, yeah. but yeah, 
So very, very cool stuff. And it was really neat to, to get to meet um, the legend that is um, Billy Tucci, which, <laughs> by the way, I've got this that I got from Randy. Look at this. Look at this old <laughs> this photo of him. And oh, I had man. him sign it next to his uh, <laughs> next. But yeah, Randy Zimmerman. Uh, I think he edited this back in the day, too. We got a Neil Gaiman story in here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the picture oh, yeah. of Billy reminds me of the uh, the videos of Adam Post talking about about the books he was publishing way back. You can find them on YouTube but long ago. Cool. Yeah. So it's a trip down mem memory lane. I do remember Razor. I read one issue and never picked it up and got into it. And then I felt bad about that when um, I was at a little tiny, tiny special convention going on two nights. And it was to show The Crow. And second night, um, there were different people at the tables. First night was just James O'Barr. But the second night was a row of people at, the t at a table in a shop right behind the movie theater. And then we all went and watched the movie. Um, but <laughs> O'Barr was at the last table. That's when he drew me a t-shirt. But right Neat. next to him was the guy who drew Razor. And right next to him was Tim Vigil. So, and I just kind of, Sweet. you know, politely blew past those guys like, hi. You know, like, hey, Tim, I've read a couple of copies of, of your book. You know frightening <laughs> so <laughs> like no i i didn't own them the you know the the storekeeper was like you have to read this is you know, obviously faust but yeah like, that's faust is a trip and i never finished it because you know this was it wasn't even finished at the time but man anyway so what else have we got here for razor so this this is a bait and switch okay so and this was the first time I even saw anything Razor, um, and I, I just happened across that other comic at a convention. But this one was at a comic shop. But you see the cover, and it's like, oh yeah, this is Razor. It's a Razor story, right? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they were doing, but it's like, okay, so here's here's her, and then and then we start this story with with uh, I guess someone that's uh, in her orbit, because um, these are the only two Razor books I have. Right. And so, so this is like one of her, her friends. So, you know, Razor's friend. And then there's this, this other character. And then they, then they proceed to like tell the story of this other lady or whatever burns down a house. It's, I guess it's some sort of villain backstory, right? This mm -hmm. villain, this villainous chick who like, you know, she's a psycho. And then, yeah, she gets off burning, burning down this house and stuff. And uh, there we go. Here, That's me, better. Back, Sorry about that. Let me back that up. No, it's fine. But yeah, she's like some kind of pyromaniac. She's like burning down the house, and um, and I, I'm guessing it's setting it up for her to be, you know, become this villain to, um, and then you know, like, that's the other thing. Like this is what she looks like now, supposedly mm -hmm. the same villainess, mm -hmm. but this is what she looked like then, and it's. I mean, why not just keep the look, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this works. Whatever is going on over here, what in the boom, boom hell this is, I don't know. But it's like, okay. But, you know, I'm not picking. I mean, I, I just, I sometimes I wonder about the, the choices um, back in the day um, when comics were were produced. I mean, I still wonder about choices nowadays. But honorable mention, I have to Frank Cho. He's another inspiration oh. of mine. These are yeah. so good. If if you get a chance, folks out there, if you get a chance to to get your hand on Skyborn, this is a really fun uh, book. Mm -hmm. um, it's five parts, fun story. Yeah, uh, good stuff. I remember Definitely. it being fun, and I don't remember. Is it? I I'm getting images in my head where I think that was that was it. But I remember really enjoying it when I read it. Yeah, this is Excalibur. So if yeah. that gives you any 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 indication of what, what's in store in this book. Like it's um and it, it's you know, it's pretty graphic as far as um some of the violence. Which by the way, I'm I'm currently reading um uh the Legionnaires. I I bought a Legionnaires uh trade paperback from like the uh, was it like ninety four around that time mm -hmm. during the zero hour period yeah. where they were doing the reboot and everything and i i just I, um i've come to realize that dc seems to be uh 
and I don't know if they, because the problem is I was always a Marvel zombie. So when I would go into a store, I would always just look for Marvel, right? Marvel right. books. I was always, you know, the Marvel guy. Yeah. And I never really read DC, but I didn't realize how fatalistic they can be. Like they'll kill a character like it ain't nothing. And I don't remember Marvel being so heavy handed, like allowing a hero to just die in, in the middle of the story or whatever, or in the middle of the action. Mm. Um, it's and, is and it, because go ahead. Do, you, do you think that's because DC is, is trying to emulate mythologies? I really don't know. I just, I know that there's a scene that I was not expecting, um, this character, um, I didn't, I didn't expect anyone to die. the The stakes were not very high in this in this interchange, like in this uh, interplay with this alien character, right? And mm -hmm. they're they're all a bunch of kids who are you know these legion of superheroes, um, and you know one of them, you know I don't want to give any spoilers away, but this one guy he makes one wrong move and in in his own pride, you know, kind of you know sticks his self out there hangs hangs a little too far out on the limb and gets his back broken and i'm like that it was just shocking to me and I, I i don't remember ever reading anything so grim um in marvel comics and it reminded me i, I read the rebirth stuff that um that jeff johns and uh ethan were uh working out together yeah, um green lantern yeah the green lantern rebirth and then uh, the follow-up was no fear I think mm -hmm. was this this other um, graphic uh, uh, trade paperback that I have, and it's I mean there's a there's this like uh, manhunter uh, machine guy, and he just like totally roasts an entire tour bus full of people, and I'm just like like unapologetically, and I'm like <laughs> I mean what like I just don't remember Marvel Comics being that 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 dark that grim. You know, yeah, DC can get can get pretty dark. Uh, they they even have a spinoff imprint for it now. It yeah, it it, it can be pretty dark. But uh, well, hey, <laughs> I feel like I'm I feel like I'm cutting you off all of a sudden. <laughs> no, 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 but, you're fine. But no, thanks for spending time with us and, and letting yeah. us get to know you and trying to teach me uh, this game that I'm <laughs> a little too thick headed to be lighthearted with. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it it seems like I got all these smash cards. I'm like, oh, this this game is going to be easy, and then and then suddenly I just stopped drawing smashes. That that didn't help either. Um, yeah, I appreciate you giving us your time. Uh, did you have? Oh, let's see. This this is always how we get out of here. There we go. Cool. Did you have any anything else you wanted to say about uh, where to find you and and uh, you know what to buy? You know, it's sh it's shill time. You got like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world are we even watching? <laughs> well, I, I unbox um, things, and so yeah, we are reboxing okay. the orange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, shouldn't we be reboxing the blue? Um, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So as far as um, places to um, to go, you. You definitely should go on to fund my comic. I've got three campaigns on there that I'm involved in. One is Super Powered Smash Masters, um, which is this fun little you know uh, card game that doesn't take itself too seriously. I think we took it way more seriously than than even it takes itself. Um, I'm so sorry, everyone. You can also oh no no seriously that's but that's I, how I the was, game is right. I was, ki I was kidding. I was kidding. Um, but um, but. And then uh, there's, of course, the what we've been talking about tonight is uh, the Out of Obscurity. Uh, it's an Arrow Comics uh, anthology that features a, a slew of um, new up-and-coming talents, uh, myself included, where we take public domain characters and we, uh, you know, we, we hit you right between the eyes with some fresh stories containing those characters. Um, I actually take one one character in particular and 
and uh, and tweak him just a little bit, give him some actual superpowers because his original character didn't have superpowers in his own comic book, and I drop him into my world. So um, this is kind of an introduction into you know this new character that's going to exist in uh, in in my universe. Um, and then there's also Chrome Dog. Um, it is still up and is still funding. I would love to um, get it, you know as high as possible you know i'd love to see it cross you know this seventy five hundred dollar line before we actually you know go to fulfillment that would be super awesome because um all the funds that i get to raise from that will go towards issue number two and beyond so um and i've got ish, uh, chrome dog issue two and issue three already plotted so it's just a matter of time before those will come out and again all of these are arrow comics uh, comic books so you can go to aerocomics.store and uh and eventually you'll be able to order chrome dog number one on there <laughs> eventually <laughs> once <laughs> once it's produced yeah eventually <laughs> cool. um, right. so well thanks everybody for sticking with us and us uh, and watching me very stiltedly try to learn a game <laughs> man i should have reread those rules today everybody have a good night or morning or wherever you are bye-bye see ya Bye-bye.